Good afternoon, everybody. Well, welcome to our sunset safari this afternoon. And thanks to all the Wild Earth fans and viewers from wherever you're watching or joining us this afternoon at Juma Private Game Reserve, Sabi Sand, South Africa. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Cedric Dold, and behind the camera, we've got Gert on uh, Rusty this afternoon. And of course, on, uh, on Wendy, we are going to have uh, Rexon and Igor. And of course, down there at Pridelands, we're going to have Chris and Panda for this afternoon. It is a wonderful afternoon. It's around about 26, 27 degrees Celsius. That's about 78, 79 degrees Fahrenheit for this afternoon. And as you can see, we are at Treehouse Dam. Uh, we are live and we are interactive. So please make sure that you're going to send all your comments, your questions, suggestions to our social media platform, uh, Twitter, hashtag Wild Earth, or go onto our website, wildearth.tv, and go onto our channel page, and uh, make sure that you do register with us. And of course, all the kids under the age of 18 years old, please pop us an email at uh, kidsquestions at wildearth.tv. TV. But yes, please make sure that you send those comments and uh, questions to us and hopefully we can answer as much as possible and uh, I'm going to definitely try and have a fantastic afternoon. As you can see, we've already started off with a, a little terrapin that's just swimming around here at Treehouse Dam. It looked like he was nibbling on something, but he's also dragging some of these uh, water weeds with him. Which just looks something a little bit funny. But uh, yes, definitely a little bit of action. And I know at uh, Penguin Beach, it was definitely a birding day that side. So I'm hoping we can also get some fantastic birds for you here this afternoon on Juma Private Game Reserve and, and in Pridelands. And as you guys know, all the explorers, please make sure uh, for the fireside chat on Saturday evening after our sunset uh, drive, uh, He'll be joined by Graham Wellington, and of course he will be discussing a few things on the fireside chat. And yes, oh look at that! Ah, it's actually on that little blacksmith lapwing enjoying a bit of a bath. It is a little bit warm this afternoon, and you can see really uh, cooling down, very very nice. And as well, you know that uh, tomorrow is Friday the 13th, so make sure. Uh, to watch our sunrise and sunset safaris, uh, we are going to speak about lucky and unlucky uh, superstitious stuff around here in the African bush. So yes, hopefully we can tell you some interesting stories from, of course, uh, Rexon and myself. So yes, keep uh, keep yourself glued to those screens. <laughs> of course, definitely out afternoon has started off with a lovely bird as well as you can see that uh, blacksmith lapwing enjoying his little bath and just cooling down a little bit and I know that we were here this morning we did see one of the little chicks which is really growing up quite a bit I haven't seen her this afternoon again it's probably somewhere around the dam area oh we've got <laughs> a fish just came up there right next to the the blacksmith's lap and got a fright there. <laughs> this morning we were driving and suddenly we heard a lot of commotion. I think the wild dogs might have caught an impala then, or the leopard might have caught the impala, and as it was dragging it, the wild dog saw it, started chasing the leopard up into the tree, and then the hyenas came to steal it. <laughs> Incredible sighting. Well, the Tajuna stories I've learned that uh, it does have future and a past. Important because it contains, of course, the history background and the knowledge of the bush. In each and every family, they have so called a tree or Amarula tree. We'll go there and kneel down and talk to the tree and say, Do We want success in the family. Yes, still sitting at Treehouse Dam. Um, we did have an uh, elephant earlier this side, but he did move further away into the uh, thickets, <coughs> um, pretty much uh, behind the dam wall. 
Of course, we lost a visual of him for now. But I think he has him. I think he also came down for a drink earlier. It looked like he had a bit of a wet legs and a wet trunk. But uh, while we continue with what, looking around here, Treehouse Dam, let's see what the weather is like around here today. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome and lovely afternoon. We're in an area where Cedric um, early this part of the morning uh, find tracks of a leopard moving into the area here. We are suspecting that could be Galamba. These um, tracks, even yesterday, moving in the same area. It might happen that she made a kill around in the area. Of course, we'll like to work around in the area finding leopard. Well, uh, I'm sure will let the Cedric take over on the leopard and continuously like to go and, and find something else. From myself, Rex, and this afternoon, Ego behind the camera, we are wishing a lovely, lovely ride for everyone. Yes, of course, coming here, this is a perfect environment for a leopard. You can see from my right, we are driving against the drainage line, moving in eastwards towards uh, Mamba Road. We'd like to check Chita Catalan coming Lidwood Road, head down to the west. I mean, for sure, looking for a leopard this time of a day, you need to concentrate on the tracks that is more important. Information that might be leading to find the leopard, it can be a drag mark or lamb call. Sometimes we have to stop and listen around there if there's any lamb call. And the best is to check also all these big trees. Possible it can be a leopard uh, up in a tree, I mean, trying to settle it down from uh, the day, more especially if, if it can be a hyena activities in the area, more especially the cubs, they will really love all these uh, thickets here up in a tree, I mean, trying to enjoy the day. Uh, I'm hoping it will be nice if we can find uh, Kalamba here. And the Chemat Mount, it's also very important to check those because leopard likes, more special cubs, while they're still young, they like to be in an elevated area to see the enemy coming from the distance. Be a leopard and a lion in the area or hyena is not an easy life, it's very challenging. You always have to make sure that uh, you are in the right position away from the other species that compete with you. Look, I'm try to love this area. Ref, yes, of course, very excited to bumble around here, yeah. but uh, of course, we're looking for signs in the area. I was a little bit excited at seeing some things in similarity with the shape of the leopard from the distance and is not. The area is very rich. If you look at the grass here, it will love by kudus, nyalas, bushbuck. This is will be the perfect area for a leopard to move around in the area. I think uh, the lumber might be in the area still. It's just a matter of finding sign and able to follow up. It won't be easy, of course, if she went off into the road. Ribbon is the matriarch and has recently been seen with injuries to her body. Corky was the previous matriarch and is believed to be taken back her status. Intima was born to Ribbon in February 2017 and also enjoys a high ranking. Hart is the next rank down. Anem June is believed to be the lowest rank, easily recognizable by a floppy left ear. Three brothers, named the Avoca males, arrived in Juma in 2018. This area had recently been vacated by the Birmingham boys. In 2019, they were seen mating with females from both prides and went on to sire cubs with them. The most recognizable lion in this coalition is Darkmane. 
Aside from the dark mane that gave him his name, he can be recognized by a distinctive limp. Yes, indeed. Let's see here, yeah, Mamba Road, there's no tracks, but we'll take the grass cut of Drunkers back towards the bottom of the uh, Leadwood Road. Is where Leopard uh, Cedric suspecting this Leopard might be moving towards this area. And let's head over to Chris and see what he's up to. Good afternoon, welcome everybody. I'm deliberately gonna lower my voice. We might be close to some buffalo. We've got word that the herd of buffalo has moved into a good signal area. They were seen this morning and now we found their tracks on top of the vehicle tracks from this morning. So we're gonna see if we cannot find them. My name is Chris and with me again on Camops is Panda. All right, so they were seen close to camp. They Actually, that same drainage we walked yesterday, they were moving, and it seems like the general direction is exactly towards where we started walking yesterday. All right, not going to go into the drainage because there might be some old bulls following them, and it's very dense there. We're going to head up onto the ridge. The wind is going towards the same direction where they are moving. So we will head up onto the ridge, go down and see if we can't get an elevated area to use our binoculars to see if we can't see them see some more tracks here there's even some dung even though it looks dry remember it's a very small piece of dung but this is from this morning this is fresh this is followable whole bunch of tracks here everywhere into the grasses been flattened here so some of them's gone that way so that whole herd has been moving here which i'm hoping will give us the opportunity to find them some more tracks over here it's not a huge herd, but it is a sizable, it's a nice herd to track. Good afternoon, Lucas. Um, unfortunately, from where I am, I won't be able to. Um, purely because the only tracks I can see is right here on the road, and they spread out. Some were walking through the bush, some were on the road, some went into the bushes. But from what I saw last night, they came to drink at camp, I'd say just over about a hundred, which is a smallish group for the area. We know that in the area there's sometimes a group of four, five hundred that might enter. All right. Which makes it a very nice group to, 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 to trail on foot because, I mean, it's 500 animals spread over a large area. It's much easier to detect you compared to a fifth of that. All right. So they might be sleeping at the moment. So that's what I'm hoping. They're probably not yet grazing, which means that we will be walking very silently, very quietly, low voices. And then once we see them, they probably will be stationary. They're not moving to, to graze by the time, which will enable us to view them. All right. Without further ado, let's start tracking. In that tree are two carcasses. There's a diker carcass and a water buck. Well, it's not as graceful as... <laughs> He's a bit hesitant because, well, climbing a tree is not the easiest, but he will get up there eventually. So let's see, there he goes. And look at the power in that. That is a massive 500 pound cat that has just climbed the marula tree and is up in there. How cool is this? I don't know how he's gonna do it, but let's see. Well, you can see the hyenas are far more tolerant of vultures than a lion or leopard would be. Occasionally a hyena will bite sort of a couple of tail feathers out of the back of a vulture, but I've never actually seen them, even once they've caught one, um, actually kill it. Oh, there we go, nearly got him. All right, 
we're going to start covering some ground to get on top of this ridge. In the meantime, let's head over to Cedric on his bumble. So I'm coming on to Weaver's Nest now. I've just left a Treehouse Dam. I just went and did a little bit of a loop around this block. Um, but um, I just want to see if I can follow up on this elephant that we had earlier at Treehouse Dam and see which way it did move. I think it was coming towards Weaver's Nest side. Uh, let's see if we can, uh, if we're lucky that side. But uh, I'm really hoping that uh, we can pick up on it Lalamba this afternoon, really. Um, I think uh, she, she definitely gave us a slip all over this morning. Um, she did such a loop. She came from Gauri Dam. She went on to Ingwe Alley. Ingwe Alley, she went straight uh, west towards Philemon's Cutline, Philemon's Dip. Well, that's where we found the tracks this morning. And it looked like she came all the way across towards Treehouse Dam and then she headed back uh, east. Uh, Elephant Carcass is pretty much right in front of us. She headed that way towards Twin Dams and now heading maybe further east. Maybe where she left the Cubs. She could have left them around there in uh, Torchwood again. So I'm hoping that she did make a kill and she's heading back to them and to go and collect them for a kill, which will be fantastic. Uh, but we will keep our eyes open. I'm just looking at, I think we can get a warthog there. So I've just got a, a couple of warthogs. It's just through some of the guari bushes here. Santiago, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh, it looks like that warthog disappeared. Uh, how do the roads uh, get their names here in Juma? Uh, Santiago, oh, um, I'm not too sure. I think rather the best person I'll speak to, Rexon. Maybe uh, maybe our final con control can also relay that question to uh, to Rexon. Um, but uh, I know it's a lot of the landowners and uh, people that's worked here before many, many, many years ago. Um, you know, got to give certain uh, roads names and all that. So, yeah, I think that's the main thing. So, uh, yeah, I'm ask Rex. And I'm, unfortunately, I don't know Weaver's Nest. Maybe there's uh, Weaver's Nests along Weaver's Nest. Maybe that's why there's no roads called Weaver's Nest. So, yes, but the, thank you for joining us and thank you for the question, Santiago. Really appreciate it. So, yeah, I'll try to look for that water. It looks like they've got a fright and they just scattered off. Uh, away from us. I didn't, definitely didn't want to hold back for anything yet. But yes, and also on top of that as well, we had uh, a quick update as well for Marips. Uh, Marips was seen on Chitwa this morning. Um, he was seen towards Chitwa New Driveway. And so from Chitwa New Driveway, he went off to, he went north over Gary Main and into Torchwood itself. So he's definitely come from Chitwa and heading north. So yeah, maybe if he comes back west, he'll come towards Juma's side. It's not too far. So let's hold thumbs. I'm really hoping that he does turn west and, and heads back into this area so we can at least uh, uh, see him again. I definitely haven't seen him for, for a while. <coughs> Cindy. Good afternoon. Um, I did get a, uh, I did ask that other day. I think somebody did answer that question. Um, it was uh, on the 14th of April. 14th of April, that was the last time we saw my rips. Um, I'm not too sure where that uh, sighting was, 14th of April. <sighs> yeah, so look, it's almost, uh, it's been a month. It's almost a month now. Well, it is a month, exactly. So, yeah. Well, it's almost a month. So, yeah. 14th of April. Wild Earth Explorers have a chance to join our naturalists in a monthly fireside chat. This is a great way to learn more about our guides, animal characters and wildlife locations. 
We would love to hear from you as to the topics that interest you the most. Email us your ideas or tweet using the hashtag WildEarth and we will be sure to take them into account when planning our evenings around the fire in the future. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your nature. All right. Now what I've got, uh, what I've got here is I can see those female leopard tracks on top of vehicle tracks here. Now, what's interesting about this is she came here, but it looks like there's another track coming this side. So it looks like she came here and she went to St. Mark because now the tracks are heading straight this side. So I think she went there, so it's a St. Marked, and then came back onto the road again and heading all the way up the road. And it looks like she went up this side. Interesting, yeah? And on the one side, yeah. Now that's very interesting because we got tracks there at uh, Twin Dams and these ones on top of vehicle tracks and we were here this morning up and down and this one is coming from the south north. So I think what we'll do, I think let's uh, head uh, further and let's see what we can find here, the female leopard tracks. I think maybe, I don't know, I'm not going to say it is Lalamba, but it is a female that's sent marking here. So it might be... I don't know if, don't know if uh, Shudulu comes this far east. Yeah, definitely, yo. Very nice. All right, let's just take a look here quickly, see where these tracks do go. All right, well, we follow up on these tracks just to see where they go. Let's head back to Rexon. I think he's just uh, doing the same as myself. He's just uh, busy tracking. Welcome back. Uh, we are now zooming, it, I mean, tight to the the tracks here. Look like Tlalamba and the cubs. They come off from the bush. We follow one single track of the cubs from Cheetah Cut Line, crossing from the east, which is Torchwood. And now we have these tracks here, both of the cubs and the mother. They're heading straight down to the west. I'm going to follow these cubs. I'm very excited. I was coming here to talk about this road, little tree, and about trees around in the area. But at the moment, I have this segment that I need to really follow up with the leopard tracks until I find the leopard. It will be very interesting for the afternoon following these same tracks where we find the lep I mean, single tracks of a cubs follow up up to here when we get live. I would like to continuously follow the leopard. If anything comes here, we'll be able to share the knowledge of the bush. Let's try to follow. This happened early during the day. Uh, I believe if I read the tracks well, this leopard has been here like less than two hours heading west. So we're going to follow up. Maybe she's leading back these cubs to the kill. Where Cedric find a track this morning, if he can go there and, and really do the back following, you will be able to find this leopard where she made the kill. So it's, it's really, really important to follow this leopard backwards and find where the direction she was coming from. Let's, let's follow. Maybe we might be lucky. Wow, it's looking great here. I still have the tracks here. I was just telling Ego, the way this leopard moving, it seems like it's gonna come out and lead with road. Lovely, lovely. Very interesting, very interesting question that uh, really come from Cedric there. He wants to, uh, many viewers want to know how this road get to be named in the area. Like a Leadwood, Leadwood Road, there's one big tree in the area, not far from here, right in the road. Big, prominent tree, it's called Leadwood, and actually get to name this 
this road, Leedwood Road. And some of the road that we just come out is called Drunkersburg Drive. One of the section in Drunkersburg Drive, you can view Drunkersburg Mountain very clearly, then it names, uh, it gets named after that. The reason here, we don't find the tracks of this leopard. It looked like they went off, but let me continue this search here. I'll come back where the leopard have went off to the bush and follow the tracks of direction of the leopard. We might be lucky. Many, many roads, it, it could be the preference of different species that like to be in that area. For, for instance, hyena road. There used to be a hyena that dance. Watch out for southern ground hornbills. If you see one, then a curse could befall you. Seeing a hyena could bring out the witches and spotting a snake track could give you a rash. On Friday the 13th of May, Wild Earth will be setting off on a special unlucky safari where we search for things that bring bad luck. Are these just mythical superstitions or could they be true? Join us to find out. Look at that, look at that, there's a tiny, tiny leopard cub. Karula has given birth overnight. Look at the little guy, we just came around the corner. That is incredible, that's probably his first solo kill. Oh, that is wonderful. Oh, and have a look, here comes Osana with the monitor lizard. So Osana, of course, at the same time decided to go climbing up the tree. He's just nearly fallen out of it again. And look at that, he's running away. The buffalo is chasing Osana at the moment. I love my adventure here. Oh, he's finding his leopard. The leopard look like he's having, he's just sending me in the wrong direction. But I know, it's not going to be easy for Kalamba to go away from me or hide away after I've seen the tracks. I have to return back from where I have lost the tracks and able to follow the right direction. Let's head over to Chris on Bushwalk. He might be lucky finding his buffalo. Who knows? All right, we're hot on the trail of this buffalo. In fact, we can hear Oxpeck 300 meters ahead, which is, I'm convinced it would be them. Probably going to be a very short tracking experience because we went back to where the last known position was this morning and if they didn't move very far it might take us quickly to find them but look at this here you can clearly see here how the grass has been flattened and even there if you go further you can even see the flattened grass how it reflects a bit of light almost like a very distinct trail the buffaloes went through here so some split off into the drainage some came up onto the hills even here, look at that. You can see there's not much tracks here that you can see, or well, that will be visible on camera, but even there, grass has been flattened. You can even see there another individual. So they've been moving there. Okay, the wind is still going in their direction. So I'm going to... go down there and I can hear ox because I'm sure that it's them. Okay, while we walk, I want to just get upwind. Jamie, hi there. Jamie's question is how do buffalo protect themselves when they're threatened? Uh, Jamie, when we do see them, and if we do see them, we'll show you those horns. Both males and females have very well pronounced horns, and the males have those well-developed horn bases called bosses and they will hit you with those, stab you with those, and then if you hit the ground, they're gonna trample you. It will spoil your day a little bit. Well, there's not many things that will try and attack buffalo. It's mainly lions. Although they are scared of us as well. Okay. And yeah, those ox pickers, but they're in the drainage there. I think we should just continue a bit further. Just check 
a little bit with the as we are in the open. I can actually hear them. I can hear them. All grunts. To a road, yeah. yeah. Right, let's keep on going. My favorite thing about Wild Earth are the animals and the interaction and the ability to wait and watch and not rush off. You get to watch their behavior and learn about it, the individuals. I would like to see the hyenas at the hyena den, and I have. There they are. Look at that. <laughs> if I could be any animal, I would be a cheetah. I would love to run fast. Our Western Cape coastline is graced with a Cape fur seal. This playful species is curious and entertaining. At Hout Bay Seal Rescue Center, seals in need are rescued, fed and nursed back to health by our well-trained team of dedicated staff and volunteers. This wonderful legacy of the center is continued as these protected creatures are rehabilitated and released back into the wild. Right there, there's one buffalo there. Now, I'm not sure whether this is the actual herd. I can see a whole bunch of them lying down there as well. I'm not sure how many. Come here and check here. There's them right there. Right there. You can just see they're sleeping still, so I think we're gonna just wait here until they start moving. In the meantime, while we do that, let's go over to Cedric. Welcome back, guys. I'm just taking a look here. We are sitting with, of course, a beautiful bush here. Of course, this is known as a magic guari. So one of the guari species. This is, of course, a shrub that's uh, it's an evergreen shrub. So you'll find uh, throughout the year, even here in winter time, it'll still be very, very, very green. Um, I'll just take a look and I'll show you with all these little berries. So, of course, it's very important to take a look. When you see the green berries, never eat green berries because you'll find that those are still not ripe enough. And if you do eat uh, the green berries of the magic worry, you could get a little bit of a, a stomach problem. So, you actually look at the colorations of these berries. You get a little bit of a redder one and then you get the nice purple ones. <clears throat> very, very good, very high in nutrients. So, I'm just going to take one off here and very high in nutrients, these berries. So of course you just take it, you don't eat the whole thing, there is a seed inside, but it's got a little bit of a fleshy on the outskirts of it. It's not bad at all. Actually, if you have a whole lot of these berries together, it actually really makes a, for a nice little meal or a little snack as it comes. But it's also very important. So you'll find things like uh, monkeys, baboons, a lot of your browsers, they'll eat these little berries, especially when they are nice and red and it looks nice and tasty. They'll eat it and of course it'll go pass through their system. And then of course these seeds will be deposited uh, somewhere else. But of course with the magic quarry itself, now I'm just gonna show you, I think a lot of people know a magic quarry as, I want to see if I can get a nice branch here quickly, uh, as a toothbrush tree, yep, there's a nice one. So of course very, got a lot of fiber inside of the branch itself, very, very fibery, the, the branches. So we'll just peel it away. And what you do, if you need a toothbrush, just make sure that you break it nice and even. 
like that. And then I'm gonna show you quickly what you do here. And of course you're gonna knock off all the bark on the outskirts. So you just get rid of the bark itself on the outside. Just like that. And you can start seeing the fiber starting to come through. And of course, you, the harder you knock it, the more you knock it, put in a little bit of water, knock it some more, and eventually you'll start getting a lovely little toothbrush, kind of even a, even a paintbrush. If you're looking for a paintbrush, you can even use this as a paintbrush. You can see all the little fibers there, and you can use that, of course, to really clean your teeth. So it's also a very good thing to use, of course, the Magic Worry. Why they've got the, why they call it a magic worry? They make sure that uh, uh, you know, these things you do not remove the entire shrub. If you do remove the entire shrub, what will happen? It will actually uh, let uh, bad spirits uh, happen and bad things. So you always just make sure that you uh, just break a branch off, and that's about it. As well, a lot of the locals as well at the crawls itself. So where all the cattle, the sheep are inside of the crawl, will actually hang this at the entrance or the exit of it, and of course it'll protect their cattle from any bad things happening um, to their, uh, well, to their livestock. Shaggy dog, yes, it has got multiple uses um, for, of course, the area, especially the big thing as well for fires. So if you do have fires in winter time and you don't have a fire beater, of course, you grab a nice big, big branch and you use it and you beat it, of course, down and uh, makes like a good fire because the, the leaves are very strong. So you can beat and you'll see that the leaves don't just fall off. They really, really attach to the stem itself. So. Perfect, perfect for a fire beater. If you are a wild earth explorer, we have exciting news for you. The winner of this month's prize giveaway will win a hamper full of explorer merchandise. Like this fantastic t-shirt that comes in plenty of great colors, a very useful tote bag, or even a cap. For those in the Southern Hemisphere that's heading into winter, a sweatshirt to keep you warm head over to the Wild Earth Explorers page. Sign up to be a Wild Earth Explorer and you could win all of these goodies. Wild Earth, it's in your nature. Hukamore. Oh, he is an impressive looking male leopard. Look at that neck on him. He just looks ready for a fight. This is only the third time that we are seeing him that is known as the Hukamori male, and he certainly has a lot of character and atmosphere. This is gorgeous. Hukamori having a drink at one of the little seasonal pans. Isn't he absolutely gorgeous? Compact, powerful, focused. I love it. We are approaching uh, Twin Dams, taking a look. We've got one male impala here. I'll just see if we can stop here quickly. Oh, we've got a oh, male impala that's just, of course, enjoying a bit of shade that's been created there by a young leadwood and uh, one of the acacia trees. So, of course, just enjoying a little bit warm. Oh, as I said, about 28, I mean, about 28, 29 degrees Celsius. It's not too bad. Of course, as you know, these uh, male impalas at this point of time, the rutting is on the go. So they are busy chasing each other all over the show and uh, trying to get the dominant one out from the bachelor herd. And of course, uh, they want to, of course, uh, control a harem. Of course, a harem is uh, a lot of females and one male. But uh, this guy's lonely at the moment, so he clearly hasn't got a harem. Um, but I did hear him just now think they were chasing each other around, making really a funny snorting and uh, uh, like kind of a burping and snorting noise. And, uh, but now he's more relaxed. I think the other one's not here anymore. All right, let's, uh, let's continue up towards uh, Twin Dams and get to the dam wall side. Let's see what's happening. I don't know there, the hippo was around here this morning as well. Oh, he's still here. Oh, Mr. Hippopotamiaus. Hello. I also wanted to sit a bit back here and just listen out as well because as I know that the last tracks of uh, that female leopard is coming into this area. And uh, if nothing is, yeah, I'll most probably head a little bit further east um, towards Leadwood Road. I know Rexon is busy on Mamba Road, Mamba Loop, that area. So I'm gonna try and see if we can uh, 
comb through that area enough for us to hopefully pick up on a, a leopard or something else. But uh, I didn't see I did see that elephant earlier, but I think that elephant disappeared. I don't know where he went to. Hoping maybe he'll come down here. Right, but we're gonna go to this dam wall quickly. Yeah, well, yeah, well, we're going to sit towards or head towards this dam wall. Uh, let's head back to Rexon and uh, see what he is uh, up to and busy tracking. Welcome back from Cedric. The tracks of the lumber carps is taking us into the thicket here, the Tamboti thicket. And we can hear the Franklin really lambing not far from here. Very difficult to drive here, but I believe that uh, we need to take this road back towards Mulawati and come back in the same area. She might be around here with the carps. If not, she might be having a kill in the middle of the block here. We may walk the area. Maybe we might be lucky. Or well, we might be lucky also find her on the road. If we come back second time, she might be walking somewhere here or coming out, heading down to the water hole. Who knows? But the tracks, of course, in between the Mamba Link and the Lidwit Road to the east. Wild Earth Explorers have a chance to join our naturalists in a monthly fireside chat. This is a great way to learn more about our guides, animal characters and wildlife locations. We would love to hear from you as to the topics that interest you the most. Email us your ideas or tweet using the hashtag Wild Earth and we will be sure to take them into account when planning our evenings around the fire in the future. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your nature. She might have killed here. There's a small pen where we're heading. It might be. I'm asking if uh, a leopard can sit on top of the termite while it's active. Yes, they, they can. Nothing to disturb the leopard because the termite itself, it happened inside the virus. Uh, it, it cannot, unless if they're everywhere and being active. This is the one of the water hole that I suspect she might come on later on, but uh, it's nothing to disturb a leopard or the termite itself because the oper operating indoors, inside, is really sometimes you find that uh, lions and leopards love to do that because the termite itself, with the humid inside, when they're active, it becomes hot they like to be on that environment and uh, really enjoy the heat from the termite man especially if it's active uh, i'm becoming more excited because reading the tracks uh, it looks like uh, driving here i can see something like a leopard but especially i like to check on trees because mom now having cubs she'll spend a lot of time up in a tree feeding the youngster she won't be happy on the ground knowing that this area they have high density of hyenas that can interact with the kill. So trees like uh, yes, Eva. If it happens that uh, the mother is walking with the cubs, and uh, just happen that uh, he finds something small, he will try to paralyze that uh, individual animal. Could be a stand back or 
grey decker. As long as it doesn't give a lot of distress calls because that can attract other species of course in the area like a hyena and lions and other leopard but scrap hair something like that or Franklin will let the youngster uh, handle with it if the youngster are good enough even in steel buck they can really do it as long if they know how to suffocate to block the windpipe not for the noise to come out mom will, will really enjoy seeing the cubs doing hunt or practicing hunting it do happen sometimes but at a stage with the leopard they do quite a lot of hunting without the cubs the cubs have, cubs have to left behind and the mother has to do his duty of shopping and coming back to the area where he might left the youngster These, those youngsters that are that age they're no longer denning his mother will leave them at anywhere because they now have their own responsibility for anything that might come very close, they can go up in it. tree. There's reason, I mean, the game drive, they start to view them because mainly and happily, because they can really defend themselves by running away from all lions and hyenas. We're in a river bed. We are here, coming here, specific to check if tracks have been crossed over here because coming from the east the only area to cross is right here. it's very grassy all this road not easy to read the tracks you might find that the leopard was walking in the middle of the drainage line or in the grass area we cannot access the information so coming to the river let's head over to chris and join him on the search of the buffalo. All right, we've gone up to the other side of this drainage line. Actually threw it around the buffaloes. And they're right below us in this little valley. It's just, we just get glimpses of them every now and then. Now, when trailing a, a group of buffalo with the aim to view them, obviously you can't just barge and then they're going to run or they might get angry. So it's a waiting game until there's opportunity to do it safely. And not only safely, you want to have a good sighting as well. So you can just see a tail going every now and then. They might even come to us and we're nice on top of this termite mount which is good structure to be on at the moment. Watch out for southern ground hornbills. If you see one, then a curse could befall you. Seeing a hyena could bring out the witches and spotting a snake track could give you a rash. On Friday the 13th of May, Wild Earth will be setting off on a special unlucky safari where we search for things that bring bad luck. Are these just mythical superstitions, or could they be true? Join us to find out. Look at that, look at that. There's a tiny, tiny leopard cub. Karula has given birth overnight. Look at the little guy who just came around the corner. That is incredible. That's probably his first solo kill. Oh, that is wonderful. I oh, have a look, here comes Osana with the monitor lizard. So Osana, of course, at the same time decided to go climbing up the tree. He's just nearly fallen out of it again. Yeah, look at that, he's running away. The buffalo is chasing Osana at the moment. Yeah, no, I can see them every now and then, but I wish I can have you here in person just to experience this view on top of this termite mount all around us. Just the bush in all of the glory. And we know the buffalo are down there. And we're gonna play, it's like a chess game. Good day, Luna. <clears throat> Luna wants to know, what risks do we face during bushwalk? Well, well, firstly, Luna, it's big five country. So over there's rhino here, there's buffalo, there's elephants, there's lion, there's leopard, there's hippo. All 
all potentially dangerous creatures, especially when you blindly walk into the bush. But fortunately, our guides in South Africa get trained very well, and obviously, combined with experience, you know what to do to stay safe. In fact, walking in the bush is, in my opinion, the best way to experience the bush intimately. We've got buffalo there. There is another one's back sticking out. They are happy. They're grazing. There's no sign that we are of any irritation to them, and that's the key. All right, they're not the only dangers. There's poisonous plants. If you don't know what you're doing, you eat them. There's scorpions. There's snakes. But you know what? I've been walking in the bush professionally for just over 20 years now. I've had some close calls, yes, but I'm still here. And you know what it's all about? Preempting where trouble may start. And that's why you're not gonna barge into there now. That's looking for trouble. We're on top of it, uh, Mark now, be patient. Eventually the buffalo will come into an open area and we just keep a distance, a healthy distance where they show that they are comfortable with, where they continue to do their normal behavior. Even with me talking here, they show no reaction. Um, the wind is coming from them to us, so that's not something that will bother them. They can't smell us. I mean, don't go and look for trouble, you know. Things happen. Animals can surprise you. And it's just how well you are trained and how you prepare to deal with that, you know. I'm 100% confident here that we are as safe as we would be in the vehicle. In fact, this is a much more immersive experience, a much more real experience. Sitting on top of this dead false marula branch. And just other than the buffalo below us, experiencing the whole bush around us. There's birds. I saw impala running there. All sorts of things. All right, this is gonna take a while before we can get a good visual on these buffalo. So let's go to Cedric in the meantime on his bumble. Yes, no, definitely. I think uh, buffalo is on foot. Very interesting. It will be very, very interesting. I'm uh, glad all Chris uh, found them. Still busy searching in the area. Yeah, I'm still looking around. I'm just between Ledwood Road and uh, Mamba Road. I just wanted to make sure that uh, there's no leopard tracks coming this way towards the uh, Chita Cut Line. But uh, I see a few little tracks up and down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yo. I don't know if this is very fresh. I just want to double check on this. Yeah, there is a female leopard tracks here. Yeah. Okay. Looks like heading into that direction now. Um, okay. It looks like that female came this way. So yeah, I think this one is, is quite nice tracks as well. It's on top of all the other uh, other animal tracks. Yeah, definitely. It's, very nice tracks here. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to shoot around to Chita Cut Line. I just want to double check if she didn't go into torture and brought the, maybe if it's uh, Tlalama, gone inside there and brought the cubs back out into Juma, which would be very nice. So uh, I'm just going to go slowly along here, head towards Chita Cut Line again. I know Rexon is also, uh, he's also in this area, so we are definitely combing this area very carefully, just to make sure that we're not going to be um, really tracking something that's still sitting inside Torchwood. That would, it wouldn't make so, uh, so much sense. So I just want to see if that uh, female did not come back into Juma again, or the Lumba. So, and let's just take a look. Okay, Mamba Road is right here, so, so she must have come all the way up from that side, coming through here. Uh, Logan, good afternoon. Yeah, thank you for joining us on a sunset safari. You got something there? Yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna take a look up here. Yeah, thank you for uh, uh, the comment, uh, Logan. Uh, yes, it's uh, tracking. It's always it always tells a story if you follow these tracks. Um, I like to do a little bit of the tracking so you can understand uh, the story of that individual animal. 
uh, for instance uh, Tlalamba. So we know exactly the route she's been taking, uh, where she's been uh, stashing her, her little cubs and um, which way she'll come back in again. So it gives us a kind of a, a, a rough idea, not exact idea, but a rough idea and it does help us a little bit to just uh, see where she goes up and down the side. Into, into the kill to eat, get their fill in there as well. But they're also going to be told off. See, it's, lions are not great at sharing their food. Okay, guys. Let me just take in frustration out on the other lion, but you see, it was interesting. In the woodlands of Juma lives a lion pride with a taste for buffalo. Look, 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 this is insane. Now, this is what I was saying about lions and buffalo. It's absolute pandemonium. Wild Earth have been privileged to follow the Nkuhuma pride for many years. One of the most loved cats in the pride is Amber Eyes. She was not successful in rearing her first two litter of cubs and was seen as an aunt to the other youngsters. Then eventually, towards the end of August 2019, we found her with four tiny cubs of her... Okay, so I'm now just coming south on Cheetah Cut Line from Mamba Road. So I did have uh, the tracks coming on the link to Leadwood. Aiden, good, uh, good afternoon. Uh, would siblings fight for territory? Definitely they'll fight each other for territory. It's uh, unfortunate that is uh, instinct in, a, in, a, in the makeup of a leopard. Uh, they are solitary animals. Um, so, I mean, I've seen it with uh, back in the days with uh, Shadow and uh, Tandy. Uh, once or twice they did bump into each other and uh, they did have a little bit of a scrap, so it does happen. Um, but of course, females, they, it's also a vicious fight, it's also a vicious territorial fight. But I don't think as vicious as, uh, as males. Uh, I must also understand males' territories, uh, of course, if a male um, breaks away from its mom's territory and becomes independent, um, those males tend to move very far. Sometimes uh, uh, siblings' territories will never uh, be next to each other. Um, so they'll, they'll venture very, very far. Far, but with a female, you'll find the female's territory, if it's a daughter, uh, she'll take a part of her mom's territory and um, sometimes, of course, you've got two daughters and then, of course, you'll have a bit of a, a clash and uh, yes, of course, they're going to have a scrap, it's just typ typical of their makeup and, uh, and, but I don't think t to the death, well, I mean, stranger things can happen, you must understand, it is nature. Okay, so I just want to take a look here, quickly, if so you can this side. I wonder if it didn't, <coughs> if it didn't shoot across from that side. Yeah. All right, now at the Ledward Junction, so this is exactly where I want to take a look if she hasn't crossed over here. Mm, I don't really see too much this side. Got, uh, got line tracks here, but not very fresh and from two days ago. I don't see anything crossing over this side here. I'm going a little bit further south towards maybe Gary Main area. Let's just take a look again around there. And she didn't go further south from where we are now. But yeah, no, look, it's, uh, it's very interesting when it comes to leopards and uh, the territories and when it comes to siblings, as I said, it's uh, uh, not often you'll find uh, two daughters really next to each other, but when it came to Tandy and Shadow, I know that uh, Shadow was in the west, Tandy was more in the east, but there was times when they did cross each other's path, and uh, it was, of course, uh, a growling and hissing and puffing, but nothing too serious. So same, I think it was, uh, it was, it was I think it was Quatile. Uh, Quatile was uh, one of the females, I think it was uh, Intima, was the mother. And uh, Quatile and uh, I can't remember the other females' names, also two siblings and uh, sisters. And uh, yeah, they were right next door to each other. So Quatile was on Hoffman's vessels area 
and uh, the other, uh, of course, the other sister was just uh, south of her territory. Uh, this is many moons ago, and yeah, they bumped into each other more times than anything. So, but yeah, never ended up in uh, too much of a serious situation. But of course, the typical way of just uh, telling each other, "Listen, stay out of my area." So. My name is Tessa. I studied animals and insects, and I specialized in African vertebrate biodiversity. But first and foremost, I am a naturalist here at Wild Earth. What inspired me to become a naturalist was a combination of a childhood love and passion for wildlife from our family holidays. It just became this amazing passion and it ignited this fire that just would not go away. To me, the skills that a naturalist should have would be that passion, making sure that you know why you've got that passion and keeping it going no matter what. The determination to never give up because it's not the easiest place to be, but I can tell you in my experience, it's the best place to be with the biggest differences that you can make. If I could be any animal, I think I would be a leopard. To me, they're the perfect combination of elegance and power and determination and independence, and yet just so beautiful. And then of course, this uh, beautiful waterbuck pool, just enjoying the this little open clearing here. Yeah. Uh, Samuel, 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 Samuel. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. What does uh, what makes uh, waterbuck different to other antelopes? Well, uh, Samuel, you'll find that uh, one thing about waterbuck, they do have a certain uh, gland under their skin that really uh, secretes a certain oil, and give them this real musty kind of uh, smell. And of course, that oil is just to make sure that it uh, covers their coat and protects their coat from dampness. So you'll find, of course, many times a water buck, uh, they use uh, water areas, hence the name water buck, uh, use uh, water areas and dams as a, a defense for themselves. So if something does chase them, they would run straight into a dam or into a river. Uh, not always the case of being uh, uh, the right thing to do. Um, I think not long ago, I think one of the water bucks almost got taken by a crocodile here at Chitwa Dam. But um, yeah, that's uh, of course. You know, other antelopes don't really. You got, well, the other antelopes don't have that gland that's pretty much sitting under their coat. So uh, yeah, the waterbuck does have that kind of protection. As well, you'll find that waterbuck they'll never move too far away from water. You'll find that maybe about 500 meters will be most. And uh, and of course, uh, 500, 500 meters, it's far, but like with this male now, it's uh, the Chitwa Dam is not far. If uh, crows fly from him now, it's about maybe 200, 300 meters uh, south of where he's lying now. But anyway, while we're going to continue down towards Gowering Main, let's head back to Rexon and see how's it going on his tracking side. Welcome back from Cedric. We just saw uh, spotted uh, a grey hornball in front of us. Just, uh, I mean, flew across the road. Beautiful, beautiful colours they have. We in Drunkersbeck Road here. Yeah, we have a wonderful, wonderful vegetation. Even close to us, we have this uh, silver cesarea. I will let Igor to show you. Silver cesarea is one of the plant in our culture. They use this a lot, more especially when it comes to a head egg or stomach egg. They use quite a lot of this. They used to show this more special boys out in the bush having cattle and suddenly they have stomach egg. I, I, I would like to demonstrate on that. This is very more important. More especially some of the people, they use it for tooth egg. So you take two leaves or three leaves, you just fold and chew them. Mm. It's very bitter. Mm. Mm. That will help. You, you chew it and suck the juice. And also, if you're out in a bush, suddenly 
If you feel like you're hungry, what can you do? You need to really survive out in the bush. If you look at this uh, kind of a tree, it has so-called Cumbrian layer that elephant dig back a lot from acacias and also from this particular. This fiber, you can make a thin rope, of course. Let me see, let me show you. Focus on that. Okay, if you're out in the bush, you need to survive. You can set up a trap. I'm just showing how to survive out in the bush. I'm doing my afternoon survival here. You see, how, uh, you can play to this and make a very strong uh, kind of a rope. Of course, it will take a little bit of time, but the end of the journey, you will see the rope, it will be perfect for you in order to make a, a, a trap for francolins and other small deers, of course. It's very tough, well, especially if they're still wet, it's very strong. You can uh, really trap uh, scrub hair and uh, you can trap mangoes, but you have to be quick because the mangoes can bite. Eh? This fiber can be so loose if or it can be tear off easily from the mangoes um, bite and other species, of course, as Janet. But uh, quickly, if you respond, you'll be able to have something to eat out in the bush. This is how actually, while I was boy in the area, is how I survive. You know, remember, I've said this bush is my university. I've learned from the bush. I learned everything out here. And thanks for Juma also, quite a lot of things I learned from here. I've never been in school. This is my school. This is my university. You can see I'm doing this very quick in order for you to see in this segment before we head over to Cedric, which is looking for leopard. I have an idea now where exactly the leopard because I followed these tracks and head into this block. I had a frankly unhappy man. And I don't know whether Kalamba is still there or left the area leave the cubs alone. But the tracks of Tlalama and the rest of the cubs are in the surrounding. Let me show you. You see how it looks like. I don't know whether you can focus that ego. And let's, let's head over to Chris with serving something good for us for the afternoon. We're in the open area. It's going to give you a brief visual on them. We've managed them. A couple of young bulls, bulls, cows look very inquisitive. They want to come and see what we're doing. If they come any closer than this, they're about 100 meters away. We will just move. So if we move, it's only to give them their space. All right. That's just pure inquisitiveness on foot. In fact, a whole bunch of them are still lying down there, but how cool is this? He's a big bull to the right, and he's not very happy, but that's normal. I'm still happy for us. Hey, let's just keep an eye on this boy. Just keep an eye on him. Can we give him some space? Move back a little bit. That's Spiri protocol. Like I said, we're going to do a short segment here, just showing you we've found the buffalo on foot. How awesome is this? Right, I think let's give him a bit more space. That bull's showing us that we need to move back a little bit more. It's not going to charge us at this distance. We're in open ground. So just to take itinerate again, we are not in trouble or anything. You can stay with us for now. It's purely just to listen to them. They're saying that bull telling us, no, move back. We do not like you so close. And you'll see as we move further away, they're going to probably do the same. Come back a bit closer, come back a bit closer. It's like a game of chess. You see now they're much more chilled. Still looking at us. 
see what the difference two or three meters make. Very, very inquisitive creatures, herds of buffalo. They all want to come and see what are these things walking here. Look, now they are looking at us, but they're 100% calm. All right. Anyway, in a case like this, good visual. We've had opportunity to view them. We're going to move out and find another place to walk. And in the meantime, let's head over to Cedric. Oh, I'm glad Chris got these buffalo. That's brilliant. Brilliant stuff. Well played, Chris. Um, right, I'm in the Mulawati now. Just came back this side because that's... Uh, I definitely want to still look around here. As you know, leopards do enjoy drainage lines. My favorite thing about Wild Earth are the animals and the interaction and the ability to wait and watch and not rush off. You get to watch their behavior and learn about it, the individuals. I would like to see the hyenas at the hyena den, and I have. There they are. Look at that. <laughs> if I could be any animal, I would be a cheetah. I would love to run fast. Our Western Cape coastline is graced with a Cape fur seal. This playful species is curious and entertaining. At Hout Bay Seal Rescue Center, seals in need are rescued, fed and nursed back to health by our well-trained team of dedicated staff and volunteers. This wonderful legacy of the center is continued as these protected creatures are rehabilitated and released back into the wild. Okay, but still coming along here. I'm going to see how far the Mulawati. I might actually head all, all along the Mulawati um, because the day has been not extremely hot, but it has been warm enough for maybe a leopard just to really uh, take cover around this area and uh, have a bit of a snooze inside of this drainage line somewhere. Because those, uh, those tracks that we did have earlier, I went to go take a look. They had not the greatest of tracks. I think that might have been from last night. Um, <coughs> excuse me, and um, so I'm not going to really follow there. The nicest tracks are still coming here towards Twin Dams, Twin Dams side. And as of course sometimes in these drainage lines you are lucky to find other things as well. So we're just, uh, just going to bumble here very slowly and take a look if we can see any of the signs or any uh, fresher tracks that's coming into this uh, drainage line, but it is always beautiful. It, it is nice and cool inside here And I said uh, leopards do like this kind of uh, habitat. It's ideal for them so, uh, Definitely keep our eyes peeled for this Yeah, no, look, it's uh, I think uh, it's been a, a tough couple of uh, days finding any any uh, rosettes and uh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be pay. It's going to be uh, a perfect payoff once we find one. It's just nice sometimes just to not find it every time because it's uh, when you do see it, it becomes more of a surprise and a, a better uh, a feel to it. But uh, yes, while we continue with the Molawati, continue looking down the side. Um, yeah, let's head back to uh, Rexon and see where he's heading to. Welcome back. Uh, this is the area where I think uh, the leopard might be. And I'm hoping if we can uh, really look around here, 
further more towards the west. But unfortunately, you'll never know. Might be the mother have left the little ones and going its own direction. And it will be more dangerous for the cubs, of course, if we want to follow the direction of the rest where they went. It's good if the mother is on, but at the moment I don't want to predict whether where the mother is in or not. Uh, driving here it might cause a little bit of uh, danger for the cubs. Let's see. Now I'm having my string here. My favorite success. I'll tell you. FC, my radar is low. You can repeat the question. I only had the my favorite uh, success i didn't copy the the whole question cool they say you ask question as if you can understand and read my body maybe just because every day i go up <laughs> i look like i'm preferring a certain area but let me say honest speaking Juma uh, this portion where we are it's very successful when it comes to uh, movement of cats I like the eastern section from the Mgari up to Chittakatlan where we are and uh, there by three house is where we have seen more leopard activity unless if uh, it's a change Time and again, season you find area, it has preference of an animal. If you look at Bifasuk Dam, furthermore, that area in winter, it tends to be more productive. Lots of game moving on that particular area, and we tend to focus on that. But in general, I like eastern side of Yatela, all the way down central, up to this part. Lot more uh, leopards movement in the area. Lions, they like uh, north of. Uh, we are teller all the way down up to Sandy Patch. If you are a wild earth explorer, we have exciting news for you. The winner of this month's prize giveaway will win a hamper full of explorer merchandise. Like this fantastic t shirt that comes in plenty of great colors, a very useful tote bag, or even a cap. For those in the southern hemisphere that's heading into winter, a sweatshirt to keep you warm. Head over to the Wild Earth Explorers page. Sign up to be a Wild Earth Explorer and you could win all of these goodies. Wild Earth, it's in your nature. I'm not going to come too close because I know you've got your babies. And hello you old friend. Isn't she spectacular? Oh look, this is too special. She's such a fantastic mother. Look at that, isn't that incredible? Early days when the African used to be in the area, living together of peace and harmony with lions and leopards and impala, they used to set up silent guns. Silent guns that are today we prefer to call it snare. There was a different form of the uh, material that people use around in the area. Time and again, you find people using knopthorn uh, combium layer. They can use silver cesarea combium layer. They can use uh, even acacia gourd. The combium layer of acacia gourd is very strong. They can make whips that can rid head the cattle and they can even intimidate all the different sort of species, when you whip it, the sun that comes out, it looks like firing gun. So this kind of um, uh, 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 a setup, they used to, or snare, they used to uh, build it around here, even in a bigger size, maybe two meters sometimes, one meter sometimes. And this end, they will tie into a tree and size the head of 
Impala and put it there. When the Impala come in a very close thicket where mainly Impala loves to move, once they hit it, as it moves, it really uh, suffocates the windpipe of Impala. In most cases, people, they will be not far from that particular area. Once the whole Impala give the alarm call, because one has been trapped, they will immediately affect going to that particular area and finish the Impala. Because if the Impala struggle for more than an hour, it might tear off the fibre, because sometimes if it gets dry, it tends to be weak. If it's still wet, it's really, really strong. In many, many cases, people, they used to um, overnight this fibre inside the dam water. That makes it even stronger and stronger. How actually African people used to set up a trap in around an area for different size of uh, uh, animals. It could be francolins, it could be anything, it could be guinea, guinea fowl, they use this method to hunt around the area. You can see that it's very beautiful, very looking, I mean, well uh, prepared. Of course, it's how actually we used to do our African rope around here. Bush does have everything we want. We don't have to really process from the factories. Let's head over to Chris, which is still having a buffalo on foot. Very interesting. As you can see our buffalo, we're in exactly the same spot you left me last. Still looking at us, but they're very relaxed now. Some of them even moved away and started feeding. Just shows you how relaxed they are. I'm going to give you one last glimpse at the buffalo. We're going to start extracting back towards our cave where we started tracking. Uh, it is safari time, so there's going to be a few safari vehicles coming in to view these buffalo. But just look at that. Some of them are even grazing, and we haven't even left the spot where we were on our previous segment. Our aim was not to encounter them in the open. I was actually trying to get onto a termite mount before they spotted us. But they did. They came a bit closer to investigate, and they do that. And just by giving them a little bit of space shows them that, okay, I'm moving back. I'm not here to harm you. We moved back 10 meters, literally. They stopped. They just watched us. We watched them. Look at them now. They're in the same spot. They're continuing as if nothing's wrong. And that's what we want to do. Don't want to go closer, then they're going to get angry. They're going to run away. And this distance, it's, it's perfect. I mean, that cow's still looking at us. But there's no aggression there. It's not going to come barging through now. Some of them is even grazing. Some have slowly moved into the bush. All Wild Earth Explorers have a chance to join our naturalists in a monthly fireside chat. This is a great way to learn more about our guides, animal characters and wildlife locations. We would love to hear from you as to the topics that interest you the most. Email us your ideas or tweet using the hashtag WildEarth and we will be sure to take them into account when planning our evenings around the fire in the future. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your nature. Watch out for southern ground hornbills. If you see one, then a curse could befall you. Seeing a hyena could bring out the witches, and spotting a snake track could give you a rash. On Friday the 13th of May, Wild Earth will be setting off on a special unlucky safari, where we search for things that bring bad luck. Are these just mythical superstitions, or could they be true? Join us to find out. still see how they're looking at us walking away, but several now and then have to look back to make sure they're still there, I'm not trying to just... That was textbook stuff. Let's get over to Cedric while we extract back to where we started. <laughs> I 
I can just imagine what Chris is doing, how he's getting away from those buffaloes. It's like moonwalking backwards. <laughs> Especially if those buffaloes are watching you. Definitely you don't want to make uh, too much of a or sudden movements, but uh, oh, well, fantastic. All right, now I'm going to head towards uh, Chitwa's side and um, I'm just going to go take a look around there again. I think there's just a nice, uh, I'll see if those little crocodiles, they might be out of the water. I'm hoping that they're busy sunning at this point in time. So I'm going to head into that area just now. And then, of course, uh, this morning we did have alarm calls of uh, impalas all the way down south there towards uh, a net Chitwa cut line. And uh, that was just south, alarm calling just south of the cut line. And I think, uh, I'm sure something was coming up that way, so I just want to go and uh, have a squiz there and take a look around that side. And, of course, you know, Chitwa Dam is always uh, a beautiful area to stop and uh, take a look at uh, little interesting things there and all the birds so yes and oh, little hippos that side as well uh, sorry FC just go with that question I, I did not copy a single thing that you said there please go again with that if you don't mind Bikile, good afternoon. Uh, yes, welcome, welcome to our sunset safari. Well, uh, leopards fight to the death for territory, definitely, Vikile. Um, that is, uh, that does happen, so especially with your males. Your males are more vicious compared to the females, but yes, uh, females will also sometimes it could end up like that if there's not. Uh, there isn't one that's uh, submissive and those fights can become really really vicious and uh, yes that could be uh, the case but not a, it's a, not a common thing of course but uh, i mean i've seen uh, many years ago we had uh, what's his name mafufinian and tyson so mafufinian and tyson were two males um, that was owning uh, a territory just west of us southwest of us and uh, they had an absolutely a huge scrap which uh, ended up for like uh, maybe about uh, 10, uh, 10, 15 minutes. We were just rolling, rolling and uh, a lot of blood. So yeah, it wasn't good. Look at that, look at that. There's a tiny, tiny leopard cub. Karula has given birth overnight. Look at the little guy who just came around the corner. That is incredible. That's probably his first solo kill. Oh, that is wonderful. Oh, and have a look, here comes Osana with the monitor lizard. So Osana, of course, at the same time decided to go climbing up the tree. He's just nearly fallen out of it again. Yeah, look at that, he's riding away. The buffalo is chasing Osana at the moment. My heart rate has gone up slightly. In fact, it's gone up quite a lot. This elephant is now two meters from us. Okay, we might have to move here. No? Yes. Sorry, my friend, but you're about to push that onto the car. <laughs> you see how cross he was that we didn't want to watch him push the tree over. That's why we moved. Yes, um, just, everybody know, please, all the explorers, uh, please uh, tune in on Saturday evening after our sunset safari. Uh, we are going to have a fireside chat. Of course, we're going to have uh, Graham Wellington. That's going to be discussing a few things and uh, all about uh, what's happening with Wild Earth. I think it's going to be very interesting. So make sure after our sunset safari, 14th of May, and uh, yes, of course, just for the explorers, so um, tune in for that. It's going to be very interesting. And as well, tomorrow it is uh, Friday the 13th. So it's not all about spooks and uh, ghouls and all that. Tomorrow is going to be about lucky and unlucky things, uh, superstition. And uh, what happens here in the African bush and looking at something or finding something, is it luck 
or is it unlucky? So yes, that's going to be very interesting. Well, I think uh, we're going to uh, yeah, we're going to go over to Rex, and then I think he's been lucky as he has got some amazing animals that he's sitting with. Welcome back. Uh, we just uh, found these uh, elephant here. Look like they just uh, after from wallowing. This is really, really important uh, and uh, very, very smart animal. These elephants have behavior that prove that they uh, are the most incredible uh, species. They are so smart, of course. Elephant really, they can really able to identify each and human being that are problem through the voice scent and also elephant can identify age of a human being young boy middle age adult through the voice i've realized quite a lot there's quite few species that are smart like an elephant the second one that i know even from the appearance if you look at the baboon and the elephant they have similarities commonly to identify age of an individual person and of course the gender of uh, in the, of people or human being itself if a lady comes an elephant cannot even look at through the voice scent and the body itself they will know that this is the, they don't pay respect same as baboon i've realized sydney you, you're loving this elephant loving smart animal a really really incredible animal i've seen that uh, in most cases at the lodge if an elephant gets into the lodge and the woman shout they will uh, really ignore keep on, on feeding but the voice of the male that is more experienced they can sense that and uh, just look at maybe try to move if you give them a lot of problem i mean in 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 most of time they will know that travel have come and able to move. In, in most cases, if I read quite a lot of um, research that done by different universities, Sexus in UK, University of Sexus in UK, they've done research with an elephant. Elephant can even able to identify or distinguish race of people. It's unbelievable that uh, they can even know language, colors, and all that. It, it's such an amazing animal because they have very, very uh, high intelligence. The brain of an elephant is three times, four times uh, bigger than a human being, up to five kg. It's really, really honorable. That's reason the capacity of knowing things is very huge. With the big brain that weigh up to five kg, it's really, really the best memory ever that you can get if you have five kg brain. Is the 3G, of course, itself. It's unbelievable species. That's the reason they come into some of this area. They'll know next year they'll come in at some point. Same water hole, same GPS coordinations, and they'll get there same time. If they find water, they'll know exactly how sweet, how sour is that water. Even the vegetation that they move on, they will know exactly in this kind of uh, uh, um, area, the grass are not the good one in this area is the best even if they come back in 20 years they will be able to identify those areas and walk through and manage to get in the area where they've been before with a very high quality or sweet water or mud of course as they're going that direction they're going to one of the natural pans we're going to follow them maybe they're going to bath all these pans that they're visiting they have been visited before they know that uh, in this kind of a mud or this kind of water hole, it's healthy. Let's continuously follow them. Tingana has been affectionately known as the Duke of Juma for many years, but his path to the throne was not an easy one. Mvula was a legend from the south. This is the cat that I'm pretty sure Tingana was sniffing around for. That is Mvula. How exciting is this? Eventually, Mvula lost, but his young son, Quarantine, started to push through from the east. 
at the beginning of 2018, an intruder arrived. His name was Hukumuri. I believe they, they, they can know my voice. If it's not first time seeing them, they can even recognize how I am. I mean, Rexon is just that guy which is talky, a little bit short. Let's uh, head over to Cedric, which is having something interesting. Yes, uh, we are on Chitwa, and as you can see, we have a leopard tortoise on top of a termite mound. <laughs> we'll call this uh, tortoise uh, Shudulu, because it's just on top of the of a, of a Shudulu. So yeah, but the beautiful female leopard tortoise busy yeah, eating away on little uh, shoots that's coming up along this uh, mound itself. And you can see she is really enjoying it. Really nice to have a, a tortoise right on top of a, t a termite mound. You can imagine some closer for her climbing up that mound. It must have been a, a good old struggle there, but uh, you know, they're kind of uh, quite durable for these things. Fantastic. You can see every time she sits up, walks, and just nibbling on the little shoots that's around here. And of course, very high in nutrients, all the grasses and little uh, shoots that come up around the termite mound because of that high mineral quantity that's inside of the, uh, the soil has of course been digested by the termites and then regurgitated and defecated out. So it's got all those minerals and nutrients in that soil. So everything that grows on this termite mound is very sweet and very good for the herbivores. Ashley, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Of course, we've got the leopard tortoise, and then we've got the other one called the hingeback tortoise. Now, the hingeback tortoise has got pretty much at the back of the child, much flatter compared to a leopard tortoise. Here, a leopard tortoise has got this real round uh, shape, and uh, we'll find with the hingeback tortoise, it's much more of a flatter shape, and they don't get as large as these leopard tortoises. And they've got a little bit of like a hinges at the back where the back legs are, pretty much for the shell to move back and forth. But you can see this leopard tortoise is slowly but surely getting around. What we're going to try and do, I'm going to see if we can get a face on that side. Oh, I think we'll... I want to see if we can get around this to a termite mound. And I just want to see what uh, kind of view we can get here. We're going to go slowly around this side. I um, just want to make sure that uh, it's going to be in that sun. Anything is going to be a little bit in the sun. I think it's not going to be an ideal thing yet. Okay, let's try it now. Sheikh Ben, uh, how do I tell the six, uh, six of the torches? Uh, uh, Sheikh Ben, you'll take a look at the back of the torches. You'll actually see that the, the male's um, shell it actually wraps around underneath we will we'll find that the female does not have that extra uh, shell casing. And uh, you'll have to mainly look at the back as well as the size as well. You must think about uh, the size. Um, while I told, said this to the female, your males don't get to this uh, size where your females, of course, get a little bit larger compared to the males itself. Um, sorry, there's a lot of birds, the alarm calling behind us here. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I just want to take a look here. Sorry, I'm trying to quickly look here. This morning we were driving and suddenly we heard a lot of commotion. 
I think the wild dogs might have caught an impala then, or the leopard might have caught the impala, and as it was dragging it, the wild dog saw it, started chasing the leopard up into the tree, and then the hyenas came to steal it. But, uh, what an incredible sighting. With the traditional stories I've learned that uh, it does have future and a past. If you follow it, it will never ever go wrong in life. It's very important because it contains, of course, the history background and the knowledge of the bush. In each and every family, they have so-called a tree or Amar ruler tree. We'll go there and kneel down and talk to the tree and say, we want success in the family. Right, as you can see, that leopard tortoise is slowly but surely disappearing now behind some of the grass, but slowly coming down the termite mound. And hopefully, oh, yeah, I think there is. I just want to take a look. Oh, it's a slender mongoose. But Truzi, how fast can a tortoise run? Well, <laughs> I don't think row that fast at all. So, yeah, Truzi, uh, yeah, they're very slow. Uh, tortoises are very slow, so I don't think they can actually run. It's more of a, a quick work, a quick walk. Let's see if I can go around a little bit, yeah. Of course, we're not going to go around too much of this termite mound, just uh, because it's not a, a, a big five animal. But I just want to see in the sun there. I think we've got another nice little view there. Yeah, but Matusi, I would love to know as well. I think the speed is very slow. I think it's... Uh, um, yeah, I don't think it's gonna be a dash. There you go. But you can see also very much of the shell, very like got a real wavy look to it. So you can sometimes you'll find uh, the older they get, the more uh, wavier the shells become. And uh, Oakley. Good afternoon. And then leopard tortoises get to around about, I think it's about, uh, around about between 70 to 80 years old, um, if I'm not mistaken. I think that uh, your leopard tortoise gets older than uh, your hingeback tortoises. And uh, some of them are much larger. You do, they do get a little bit larger than this female that we do see right here now. Um, but it is uh, definitely uh, an animal that gets to a, a proper uh, uh, old age. And so, yeah, that's your, I think, your leopard tortoise. I think the, the tortoises, there's a, uh, I think it's your hingeback tortoises that you get further down in the Cape area. I know that they as well get to quite a, a, a good age as well, to from I think about 60 to 70 years old. Some of them actually aged them up to a hundred, eh? That's you know. Now, well, we're going to try and see if we can make uh, a loop around this to uh, termite mound. Uh, I think let's head over to Rexon and see what he's got to show you guys. Welcome back from Cedric, we're still with this elephant. Uh, some of them, they disappear. And this young bull look like he's having a very healthy grass around the termite. I mean, following elephant for many years, I really understand that the elephant is one of the species that are common behaving like a human being. Or they can understand a lot of things that we really understand. For instance, look at the elephant. They can mourn their death. And that believes from my side that the elephant, they can understand death as human beings do. You tend to see quite a lot of elephants. If one member dies, all of them they will come in that particular area and mourn. And human, be human beings do the same. That is one of the things that makes the elephant they are so smart, they are so smart when it comes to knowing things. 
And of course, this is one of the species that never confuse with their own shadow. They can see their own shadow, but especially this time of the day where the shadow is more like uh, really coming out quite often. If they move, it can see their own shadow. Going into the area where there's a mirror from the rodge, they can easily identify itself. So that means each and every elephant can know the way it looks like. And when it comes to the mirror, it can able to know that it's itself. Other species that don't do that, you tend to see they get to freak out quite a lot when it comes to their own uh, 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 appearance of the own body when it comes to a mirror. They cannot handle that, but the elephant can do that. Ribbon is the matriarch and has recently been seen with injuries to her body. Corky was the previous matriarch and is believed to be taken back her status. Intima was born to Ribbon in February 2017 and also enjoys a high ranking. Hart is the next rank down and in June is believed to be the lowest rank, easily recognizable by a floppy left ear. Three brothers, named the Avoca males, arrived in Juma in 2018. This area had recently been vacated by the Birmingham boys. In 2019, they were seen mating with females from both prides and went on to sire cubs with them. The most recognizable lion in this coalition is Dark Mane. Aside from the Dark Mane that gave him his name, he can be recognized by a distinctive limp. While I'm still with this elephant, um, I'd like to share with you there's reason if you look at the elephant behavior, the way they do parental care, exactly the same we do. All the time in families, we tend to be really protecting the little one, the child, the children. If it's a first priority in our life. Exactly the same with an elephant. We have checked this morning one of the elephant had coming down to the water. Suddenly all the head tried to help that individual, knowing that that is the future of tomorrow. So elephant, they're so smart. And there's reason I love following elephant because they teach quite a lot of uh, behavior or life in general. So following the elephant, you'll learn quite a lot. And one thing with this uh, special animal, I love when it comes to in the area, if you come with a vehicle, more especially if you really mean loving them, they can pay back to you. That uh, I've proof. A lot of time, I've never been uh, charged by elephant in a reserve ever in my life. I might be calculating uh, 33 years experience working in a bush following an elephant, also on foot. I remember at the time I was scouting from uh, Wild F. That was my best favorite sightings of all uh, sighting of breeding herd of an elephant in the area that I used to work with all naturalists and the cameramen and really leading to the uh, breeding herd of an elephant and able to surround us. I remember the best one that uh, I would never ever forget. It was myself and Tristan. Um, I forget who was uh, uh, doing the camera. The all herd of elephant come and surround us. We were all sitting down, tell everyone to sit down and they all come and enjoy our present into uh, that uh, area or in an environment because we are right on top of the termite. In most cases, if you read the book, they will tell you never ever walk and get to a uh, breeding herd of elephant. They're so dangerous. Question, there's a question here with how do uh, male elephant help on uh, protecting youngster? Yeah, in most cases, male elephant are lonely. They're not, they're not forming part, but they do sometimes if they come across with the uh, breeding herd. If anything comes there, they, they form a part of the herd and, and do what the herd doing. If it comes to protecting, they'll do. Like now you see there's a young male here, he's not with the head, it just happened that he's joining in and out. But if it comes to, for instance, if a hyena or lion trying to hunt these guys, the male elephant will be participating on uh, helping the youngster. I've seen before 
where the youngster dis maybe happens that separated from the females, it drew from the young males sometimes they think like they can do the thing without the head. You find they come across with the or old male or males, you'll protect that particular youngster and lead it back to the um, head itself, tracking the head by the scent until you find it and rejoin the youngster. It's unbelievable. And all of that, it tells that the elephant is so smart. Tracking the head and release the youngster and head over the youngster, it tells the elephant knows like we do. Exactly the same uh, as human beings who love doing common thing that the elephant doing. Maybe I believe that uh, human beings have uh, learned or copied from wildlife as far as an elephant who knows. He's taking us back in a wrong direction, but we'll try to follow. Heading east now at the moment, pretty much there might be continuously heading towards uh, Gariman. This is almost the area where we have lost the tracks of uh, Kalamba to, to the south of here. If you decide to get out of here, maybe we might be lucky to see. Let's head over to Cedric and join him and cheat to cheat and enjoy the Cheeto Dam. Dam. And of course, we're just looking at this female now. And you'll find now and again, you'll see this little head pop up. Of course, this is the female, with, it's got that little cough with her. but. You just have to take a look and you'll find like every, maybe, oh, oh that's her head. And you'll find, oh, no, she decided to go down again. Now, the little one's head just came up there again. So you'll just take a look carefully and you'll find like maybe every 10 minutes, uh, 10 minutes, every minute it'll come up and okay, get a breath of air and it'll go down again. There's two hippos, it's also busy blowing quite a bit yet closer to us, but oh, there goes the little head underneath. I think it just came up. <laughs> Look at it. In that tree are two carcasses. There's a diker carcass and a water buck. Oh, it's not as graceful as <laughs> He's a bit hesitant because, well, climbing a tree is not the easiest, but he will get up there eventually. So let's see, there he goes. And look at the power in that. That is a massive 500 pound cat that has just climbed the marula tree and is up in there. How cool is this? I don't know how he's going to do it, but let's see. See, the hyenas are far more tolerant of vultures than a lion or leopard would be. Occasionally a hyena will bite sort of a couple of tail feathers out of the back of a vulture, but I've never actually seen them, even once they've caught one, um, actually kill it. Oh, there we go, nearly got him. And you can see it here. Well, I would say a female. You can see the females are much pinker around the eyes. So they've got more pink and also on the little bit of that ears as well. And you'll find that the males they tend to be a little bit darker around their eyes. And of course, a much larger uh, head. So and there's a female, of course, a little youngster next to the female as well. So it is a nice little pod that they are sitting with. Um, yeah, there is another vehicle that's just coming to join us here yeah, and just passing by and all that. And uh, as you can see, they are actually having a good time. And uh, yes, uh, they are just relaxing and having a good old afternoon before uh, they are going to start venturing out and uh, heading out for some nice grazing areas. And uh, there, some of them, it uh, looks like they're, most of them actually move quite far north from where we are now. Uh, it is uh, the main road called Gowrie Main. It's north of us. and. Uh, like this morning, I saw all their tracks going up into Torchwood and coming down again, of course, before the sun rises. So they do venture out quite far for uh, specific grass species that they do uh, feed on. You can 
Yeah, you can hear definitely. You can hear the blacksmith lapwing in the background, and also the Egyptian geese. Lynn, uh, uh, Lynn, uh, 11 years old, yes, definitely. It was always nice to see uh, hippo families are oh, really nice. And I think especially when it comes to the late afternoon, uh, once they start becoming really active and getting ready for moving out to go and search for any grasses, um, I love that late afternoon when the young ones, especially the little calves, and they start interacting with each other, um, it becomes really, really uh, enjoyable to watch. But yeah, these Egyptian geese are making so much noise. I think a lot of them are gone. You can see the display of the the male some bobbing his head up and down like that and sometimes opening their wings and just to display to the female and show dominance to any other intruders and I think there's another intruder that had just came there you go see you. watch how he displays and you'll find that the other one is really sitting in a dead tree as well and I think that is what's upsetting the one male that's sitting on the dam wall now And they can become very bossy over their water holes, uh, the Egyptian geese. So always making sure that there's no other intruders coming to their water source or their water areas. And then sometimes they'll do like these uh, fighter jet uh, maneuvers in the air and chasing each other all around. Very, very rowdy. But yeah, a lot of the rivers as well, I know that down there in the south of, of the Kruger Park, you've got a big river system called the Crocodile River. And um, I stayed there for many, many years. And uh, it was always fascinating listening to these Egyptian geese in the morning and the afternoon. Uh, they would really, we would so many of them around in those rivers. <laughs> it, it becomes almost like deafening. You've got like hundreds and hundreds of these uh, Egyptian geese making that noise. Wild Earth Explorers have a chance to join our naturalists in a monthly fireside chat. This is a great way to learn more about our guides, animal characters and wildlife locations. We would love to hear from you as to the topics that interest you the most. Email us your ideas or tweet using the hashtag Wild Earth and we will be sure to take them into account when planning our evenings around the fire in the future. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your nature. All right, um, I think what we're going to do, we're going to continue where, uh, of course, what I mentioned about uh, this morning when we heard those uh, Impala alarm calling on the southern side. So I'm going to head that side and go and see if I can follow up that side. Ali, good afternoon. Uh, is it true that Egyptian geese are the most dangerous geese? Uh, Ali, I'm not too sure on that one. Um, uh, I'll, I'll definitely take a look uh, for you. That is... Uh, I don't think they will be dangerous. I think there might be some other dangers. I'm looking at the spur wing geese. I mean, that is uh, quite, uh, they're quite vicious. But uh, I'll definitely take a look for you. But uh, I don't, I don't really think uh, the Egyptian geese are the most dangerous. But 
I might be wrong on that one. But yes, let's uh, move on. And uh, as I said, let's go follow up on those um, Impala's alarm calling from this morning. I did take a look around for those baby crocs here now. Uh, we did take a look at the logs and uh, scanned the area as well. Uh, I didn't see any baby crocodiles here for the afternoon. But yeah, we will keep on looking and hopefully if we do find any of those baby crocs around here, we'll definitely let you know. But uh, while we continue along this dam wall, let's head back to Rexon and see, it, see how it's going on his uh, drive. Welcome back uh, from Celtic. Good luck, Cedric. I believe uh, we, we might see something there on the lamp call of Impala. We are right here at uh, Blankersberg. After the elephant, they headed uh, straight towards the south in the area of uh, Leadwood Mamba in between. We are continuously checking the area. They were a little bit uh, upset of the uh, Franklin in the area where we are. We're just checking, we can't see any bit of prey. You never know, this is almost the area where the lumber tracks uh, were headed. We were thinking maybe it will be joy here. There's a lot of impala there by Chittakatlan moving straight to the north, away from uh, the area where we spotted them earlier on. But they're all relaxed, nothing that uh, really shows them engaged with the leopard. So let's carry on moving around here. We'll take anything that will be interesting. Even a hyena that will be hunting, it will be great. African hockey eagle, that will be nice to see for the afternoon. I believe that Columba, she's sick and tired of vehicles, decided uh, to lie down and wait until the vehicle shut down and start to move around and hunt. But never know, something that a uh, leopard can learn. We only know the sight of the elephant that are so smart, but uh, it can be also leopard no times of vehicles and what will be the impact, of course. Over many years, things it's revealing the good of the leopard and the elephants and all lions that are so smart. An unbelievable species. We would like to take um, an adventure towards the Pefesuk uh, boundary. Maybe you know, you'll never know. I mean, lots of things that uh, come from that side. And uh, it just remind me which uh, portion of Juma that I love the most. So some of the portions, just because we don't go there quite often, doesn't mean And they have seen a leopard, uh, we, if I'm not mistaken, we have seen Marie's St. Marking and Marie's vocalizing by now. I'm not sure how old is he, but he must above 18, 18 months to us, uh, two years now, uh, when he had uh, him and, and, and Shasha were a little bit arguing. So we've seen him St. Marking, so above that, it depends. Of course, in the area where he might be, with the high competition, you might start uh, in the early stage, of course, because each and every one is putting scientists intimidating. So you might uh, even yourself tend to be stand for your ground and do the same. But mainly uh, a leopard to St. Mark, when you reach St. Mark, soon you reach the sexual maturity, you start to St. Mark. Saint Mark it's all about, uh, you now have grown up. Watch out for southern ground hornbills. If you see one, then a curse could befall you. Seeing a hyena could bring out the witches, and spotting a snake track could give you a rash. On Friday the 13th of May, Wild Earth will be setting off on a special unlucky safari where we search for things that bring bad luck. Are these just mythical superstitions or could they be true? Join us to find out.
Look at that, look at that. There's a tiny, tiny leopard cub. Karula has given birth overnight. Look at the little guy who just came around the corner. That is incredible. That's probably his first solo kill. Oh, that is wonderful. I oh, have a look. Here comes Osana with the monitor lizard. So Osana, of course, at the same time decided to go climbing up the tree. He's just nearly fallen out of it again. Hey, look at that. He's running away. The buffalo is chasing Osana at the moment. We, we all have followed lots of uh, bloodline leopards of Juma. We know that uh, quarantine at the age of three and a half, you are scent marking and mating. It, it's really unbelievable, unbelievable to see a leopard in that age start to challenge and do that. We've seen with the uh, Tabangume at the age of three, three, three and a half years is already starting to scent mark and challenging. So some of the leopard, when, if they're healthy, they feel, they feel like challenging and they do that and they're successful. So some of the leopards in the area where they might have more competition and more young males in different age, they might start to when they are like five years, they start to challenge. But scent marking, it's in the nature. It's uh, how they communicate. Scent marking, for me to understand with all leopards, male and the female, lions and all that, lions are slightly different. But uh, with the leopard, is the communication. You can scent mark and not to mean you are challenging, but it's how actually you tell that I'm a very young one, I'm not co competing. And when the other male gets in that area, know that you are a, in, the, in that particular portion, you're still young because your scent is really reveal all your secrets. Then they will know that this one is not on the list of challenging. Let's take uh, this opportunity and head over to Chris and uh, join him with the buffalo. <laughs> Seems like it's buffalo afternoon. And we've also decided we're gonna just drive around a bit now. We've done quite a bit of walking last week. See if we can't be lucky with cats and uh, <laughs> Buffalo seems to find us. This is a, seems to be a lone dugger boy. Dugger bull, dugger boy, lone buffalo bull. Mm, he's not a young guy at all. Now he's hiding. It's gonna quickly reposition, just stay with me. See, and then, now we were the car, so we can get a lot more closer than we were compared to earlier with that herd. Here we go, hello boy. Yeah, there's that, there's that look again like you owe money. Looks miserable, actually. So, by the way, we at Leopard Dam now. See, so he's going to the water now. He's an old boy. All the doves going, eh? I think he's gonna roll in some mud. Right, let's see if we can get a better view from that side. I think this is gonna be cool.
My favorite thing about Wild Earth are the animals and the interaction and the ability to wait and watch and not rush off. You get to watch their behavior and learn about it, the individuals. I would like to see the hyenas at the hyena den, and I have. There they are. Look at that. <laughs> if I could be any animal, I would be a cheetah. I would love to run fast. Our Western Cape coastline is graced with a Cape fur seal. This playful species is curious and entertaining. At Hald Bay Seal Rescue Center, seals in need are rescued, fed and nursed back to health by our well-trained team of dedicated staff and volunteers. This wonderful legacy of the center is continued as these protected creatures are rehabilitated and released back into the wild. <laughs> it's just gonna lie there and ruminate. Might roll a bit eventually. No, that's not because he's hot. It's because of parasites and ticks and fleas. Often when they have wounds as well, they'll cover it with mud. <laughs> Becky's farking. Oh, here, correct. If buffalo dung is the same as cow's dung, yes, it's almost identical. Almost cannot distinguish the two from each other. Even their footprints are the same. Oh, just my apologies. It sounds like buffalo tongues are as long as a cow tongue. Yes, yeah, they're very similar. They're very, very similar. There's a gray heron as well in the water. Very peaceful, eh? Hey? It's like you don't feel like talking, actually, just soaking it up. I'm gonna leave this old guy in peace. I'm gonna move on, but let's go over to Cedric in the meantime. He's also out looking for stuff. So welcome back here. I'm uh, just uh, west of uh, Chitwa airstrip and uh, there's an impala as you can see they're all alarm calling and I'm just trying to figure out what are they looking at. Oh okay one sounds very sick there as well. All right let's go take a look quickly. Sorry I just want to uh, look. They're all looking straight inside here towards the airstrip. Maybe there's something that we, we can't see. What is it? What is it? Tell us please. Let's go a little bit past here. Yeah. You never know. Sometimes Impala can be giving us a, a false uh, alarming here. Yeah? But uh, let's just take a look. Maybe they see something. Oh, there's another male just coming past from that side. So I don't know if it's, they saw him and they decided to start alarm calling. Um, but it'll be very strange. I'm just looking carefully towards the airstrip. Uh, sometimes I'm just also very skeptical when it comes to Impala alarm calling because, uh, as I said, they could be seeing another Impala running in a distance and they're not knowing what it is and then they'll just alarm call. Um, but if it's a kudu or something, then it's a different story. But we do have kudus as well. So let's some nice uh, 
Let's go take a look. Got beautiful zebras here on this airstrip with a beautiful sun that's busy setting as well. I don't want to take a look at anything here. Alright, we're gonna just Alright, we're just gonna stop here. We've got a beautiful sunset on the airstrip and of course a few zebras. If you are a wild earth explorer, we have exciting news for you. The winner of this month's prize giveaway will win a hamper full of explorer merchandise. Like this fantastic t-shirt that comes in plenty of great colors, a very useful tote bag, or even a cap. For those in the Southern Hemisphere that's heading into winter, a sweatshirt to keep you warm. Head over to the Wild Earth Explorers page. Sign up to be a Wild Earth Explorer and you could win all of these goodies. Wild Earth, it's in your nature. Hukamori. Oh, he is an impressive looking male leopard. Look at that neck on him. He just looks ready for a fight. This is only the third time that we are seeing him that is known as the Hukamori male. And he certainly has a lot of character and atmosphere. This is gorgeous. Hukamori having a drink at one of the little seasonal pans. Isn't he absolutely gorgeous? Compact, powerful, focused. I love it. So yes, we've got a beautiful, nice dazzle of zebra. That's of course uh, Ella grooming each other here, as you can see the two of them. Just making sure that they're taking off all the unwanted bits on their coats and keeping their coats in good nick. So they do help each other by doing that. Each one stripes is different, really stunning. What a beautiful setting this. I really, really enjoy once again here. As you can see that beautiful sunset. That's slowly the sun going down here on the western side towards the Drakensberg mountain range. And we've got the parlors, and of course we've got some nice male ram. I think this is the male parlor. You can see he's busy doing his territorial uh, urinating and also defecating. Making sure that he lets other males know that if there's any females here in this harem, that it belongs to him. But of course, I think he's the one that gave everybody a scare when he came running through. I think the females thought it was a predator and they started alarm calling. Oh, there comes a. Uh, 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 okay, I was just going to see what happens. Sorry, there's just a, a hyena that's coming across the airstrip now. You'll find. Uh, here we go. I don't know which hyena. Let's take a look which one of them is. And this hyena is approaching all these impalas. So maybe somebody knows which hyena this is. Maybe also from the Elephant Plains uh, clan. But it did come from the eastern side of the airstrip now, so I want to double check. <laughs> He's walking, you know, we'll talk in the background, really. Everything just watching him walking past. And of course, you can see how the zebra's all moving straight towards that hyena. You can see all gathering up and then making sure they stick together. And of course, just to intimidate that hyena. You can see then hyena just decided to start moving off. I wonder if the kudu will start barking. See this hyena coming. <laughs> that beautiful golden light in the background it really shows that hairs on the spine and on the neck of that hyena. It just shows you the impalas, they're not too phased about it. Kudus, they're not too phased about it because they know hyenas, not like a lion leopard where they'll be stalking the prey. A hyena, they know that there's hyenas in the open and the hyenas not, not, not even bothered about uh, any of the impalas and that and it's just kind of ambling through uh, this beautiful, uh, I can say, collection of uh, species.
Okay, I think so. so the hyena is hot. That'll be very interesting. Alan, see that the ears are tattered, but if it's hot, that's fantastic to you. Now that she's all the way here towards the Chitwa Estrip. She's just standing behind the trees there now. I think she's just watching. Of course, the kudus in the background. He's slowly just moving past her. He's just taking notice of her, but uh, not barking. If it was, uh, as I said, if it was a, a different predator, they will definitely find those kudus will bark. It's an alarm calling. <laughs> a stare down. Oh, that good old stare down there. Oh, well, all these impala coming straight towards his hyena now. Wow, what a setting, what a scene. And I'm sure that hyena is just maybe, maybe opportunistic and maybe sees a, a one that's injured or anything like that. You can see it's just looking and investigating. All we need now is a, a good old wild dogs to come running in and chasing these impala. I think then it'll be, it'll be definitely a chaos here. Yeah. But yeah, watch the hyena's going to go straight towards him now. Dizzy, yes, good afternoon. Definitely this hyena is on a mission. Taking a look. I'm just taking a look. You can see he's just she's looking for that, any, that opportunity. If maybe luckily there's a, a injured one. And she's just kind of investigating on all these uh, parlors and all these animals around, yeah. But as you can see, the animals don't feel too threatened by her presence. Wild Earth Explorers have a chance to join our naturalists in a monthly fireside chat. This is a great way to learn more about our guides, animal characters and wildlife locations. We would love to hear from you as to the topics that interest you the most. Email us your ideas or tweet using the hashtag Wild Earth and we will be sure to take them into account when planning our evenings around the fire in the future. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your name. It definitely looks like Hart has uh, disappeared now. I think she's gone uh, towards the western side of this clearing, towards that tree line. Of course, now we've got all these impalas, lots and lots of impalas. Good time of the year for actually just watching impalas, because especially that the males are rutting and, of course, copulating with the females and, uh, of course, challenging each other for, for those harems. And, I mean, there's some harems here that's looking at least about maybe about 50, 60 in a harem here. It is uh, incredible, but not many times that you'll find that it'll be just the one male that'll be copulating with all those females of the harem. So maybe you'll copulate with three or four, maybe ten, and then you'll find that yeah, all of a sudden another male that's much fitter, that's been feeding, and its body condition is much better compared to the male that's actually got the harem that hasn't been feeding because he's been keeping all the females intact. And of course they'll change, change over and uh, a new male come in and challenge the dominant male and push him out of that harem. And then he'll start copulating with the females that go into heat. And while we sit here still at uh, 
uh, this open clearing. Let's head back to Rexon. I think he's got some stunning view of a dam. Beautiful, we are at Bethesuk Dam. We're witnessing here a pied kingfisher is doing his pied. Of course, you can see he's diving to the water. He's really fishing at the moment. It's a beautiful time, of course. He's sitting at the edges of the water. Beautiful time to fish. These guys are really, really clever. What they're doing now, hovering on top of the water, the shadow itself, it confuses the fishes. Seems like, uh, of course, there's a butterfly on top and the fish just come out shooting as they're going to catch the fish. At the same time, the pike kingfisher will catch the fish. You see the dive dam, it might have a fish now. I'm not sure, but look like. Uh, miss, not a successful hunt. Is how actually they're fishing. Really unbelievable. Wow. You keep doing that uh, and eventually you might uh, be successful. So it's a lovely water sighting, of course. Look at how actually it's going to the edges, uh, most of the time to the edges of water where small fish, a um, lot more to be found, moving at the edge of the dam itself. They go for medium sized antelope fish and uh, that can able to swallow easily. We have quite few, I mean, here in this waterhole. I've seen two part kingfishes also even competing. There's more like blacksmith's plover and um, uh, I mean, spotted decop or spotted uh, thickney. The, all of these guys love to be around water. Ah, uh, unbelievable. We'll wait until maybe we might be lucky seeing him having a fish. But it keep like uh, going. He can really get to see what might be in the water. Uh, really. I've seen it pine fish before. Caught a big fish, but not in this dam. In other dams, uh, they are so good. They can spear fish easily. If you look at towards the edges, I don't know whether you can still see that there was a blacksmith plover, kingfisher, uh, spotted uh, thick knee, and all of these, huh? Blacksmith plover or blacksmith lapwing? Blacksmith lapwing. Uh, so for correction, uh, they're all caught lapwing at the moment. They love to be at the edges of water and they breed very close to the water. They find a very dry area around the water. So the reason, most of the time, driving towards the water all like this, more especially you need to check carefully because these guys love to nest. The blacksmith lapwing, of course. They're very much protective. I've seen this uh, species of birds, especially if it's nesting. They can really... Watch out for southern ground hornbills. If you see one, then a curse could befall you. Seeing a hyena could bring out the witches, and spotting a snake track could give you a rash. On Friday the 13th of May, Wild Earth will be setting off on a special unlucky safari where we search for things that bring bad luck. Are these just mythical superstitions or could they be true? Join us to find out. Look at that, look at that, there's a tiny, tiny leopard cub. Karula has given birth overnight. Look at the little guy who just came around the corner. That is incredible, that's probably his first solo kill. That is wonderful. I have a look, here comes Osana with the monitor lizard. So Osana, of course, at the same time decided to go climbing up the tree. He's just nearly fallen out of it again. Hey, look at that, he's running away. The buffalo is chasing Osana at the moment. Wow. Look at that. The pike 
kingfisher. It really, really unbelievable how they, the hunt. The two species are, are gray and uh, pied kingfisher. They use different method of hunting. The other one spear, and that one just feel with the feet. If there's any movement, they spear. These guys, they like to eat quite a lot of uh, all insect that might be in the edges of water. Lots of mosquitoes, flies, and other uh, water creatures that are very small that moves inside water. Oh, lovely. This guy is very, very active. Of course, it's not a waste of time coming here. It really entertain a lot. They just teach me while I'm here witnessing this, uh, kind of, I mean, pike kingfisher. It's not always that you're successful, but you keep on trying. That's in life. If you try things, you have to do it many times. If you success, you are lucky, but you need to keep on trying. You see, never ever uh, quit. You keep on trying all the time. Even if it doesn't make a, a kill, you will come back again. Wow. There was uh, the cap turtle dove, and it's really giving a space because most of the time you find that. Uh, it's a little ghost hawk and the others that hunt other species of birds around in the area and they're so good when it comes to flying. We are at the dam here, it's just a beautiful, beautiful scenery here. I mean, if you look at uh, the color and the sun, there's a go where bird to the west of us, um, magic here. I see you're asking a question, how the kingfisher are uh, able to see a, a fish on the sky? The, the eyesight is very good. As they're simulating hover, or hovering on air, that uh, kind of uh, shadow, it goes to the uh, water. And the fish, what they do, they see that and shoot as they're going to catch the uh, a butterfly or any flies that might be inside the water. That moment, as they pop the head, the pied kingfisher would be nailing the fish. Is how actually they see. Look at the beautiful, beautiful sunset. There was a beautiful uh, goer bird on top of the tree here, yeah, close to us, before the sun. It was looking gorgeous, unbelievable, beautiful, beautiful afternoon. I believe it, of course, we are in a little bit low ground. If we go to the high ground, the contrast from that uh, uh, sunset, it's magic. Especially if you are around um, Buffet Suksain on that area, Sandy Patch on that surrounding. Later on, the color of the sky, it will be more reddish. It's beautiful, beautiful picture. Take this opportunity and uh, really heading to Cedric who's having a beautiful sunset.
Yes, definitely the sunset is just amazing zing this evening. It is really, really pretty with these beautiful impalas in the foreground. And of course, a very misty kind of uh, hazy look to the rest, like into the into like the valleys. And then of course, that beautiful sun that is really setting towards uh, the Drakensberg mountain range yeah, in the west. And it is really, really beautiful. But it is, it's amazing how big this uh, herd of impala. Um, I, I mean, I can't even count. I think there must be around about 16 impalas, yeah, females in this harem. Way into into the kill to eat, get their fill in there as well. But they're also going to be told off. See, it's, lions are not great at sharing their food. Okay, guys. Let me just take in frustration out on the other lion. But you see, it was interesting. In the woodlands of Juma lives a lion pride with a taste for buffalo. Look, 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 this is insane. Now, this is what I was saying about lions and buffalo. It's absolute pandemonium. Wild Earth have been privileged to follow the Nkuhuma pride for many years. One of the most loved cats in the pride is Amber Eyes. She was not successful in rearing her first two litter of cubs and was seen as an aunt to the other youngsters. Then eventually, towards the end of August 2019, we found her with four tiny cubs of her own. Look at that sun, really kind of climbing behind a bit of a, not much cloud, but like a very hazy layer that's uh, hanging above, uh, above the ground, yeah, above the horizon. And uh, it is really making for a spectacular uh, sunset. I think it's a perfect time for a good old gin and tonic, or a nice glass of wine or a beer, a good old sundowners. I think it is ideal time of the day. I love this time of the day. Hopefully everybody at home or wherever you are watching, you're also enjoying this beautiful sunset here in the Sabi Sands. Susie Miller, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful sunset uh, safari. It is, uh, can't get over that beautiful sunset at this point in time, that big orange ball with this, that hazy clouds that's running in front of it, which really gives it a beautiful look. I just want to spend a minute or two just listening to the African bush and all the noises around us. And of course, you'll find that these impalas will start enjoying these open clearings at night time. Like now it will all come up to these open clearings with the airstrip and, and to an area where they can at least feel a little bit safer at night time. So they've got a bit of better uh, a view of anything that is approaching them um, compared to being in a thick vegetation and being surprised by one of the predators. Not long in the background as well. Now and again, you'll find that these male impalas are chasing each other all over the show, grunting and snorting and making the strangest noises at this point of time because of the rutting that is happening. For 
Well, we continue watching the sun set here at Chitwa airstrip. Let's head back to Rexon. I think he's got some something hunting in the water. That sounds quite interesting. Welcome back from Cedric, who's watching the beautiful sunset. We're still here. This uh, grey heron was really giving us a little bit of action, hunting, even went to the water, deeply uh, into the dam, looking, hunting fish. With this big action on the feet, was really done. It looked like used more the beak, of course, even creating sounds that really prefer or love by fish and able to come close, then they can make a kill. The eyesight of this species is unbelievable. To see the fish that might be moving here, they feel it and see water. Look at the gray heron. That's still not moving. She's trying to uh, really figure out what might be moving uh, close by. Especially if the feet get to be touching the fish, they know the speed of the fish and where to spear. My name is Tessa. I studied animals and insects, and I specialized in African vertebrate biodiversity. But first and foremost, I am a naturalist here at Wild Earth. What inspired me to become a naturalist was a combination of a childhood love and passion for wildlife from our family holidays. It just became this amazing passion and it ignited this fire that just would not go away. To me, the skills that a naturalist should have would be that passion, making sure that you know why you've got that passion and keeping it going no matter what. The determination to never give up because it's not the easiest place to be, but I can tell you in my experience, it's the best place to be with the biggest differences that you can make. If I could be any animal, I think I would be a leopard. To me, they're the perfect combination of elegance and power and determination and independence, and yet just so beautiful. It looks like with the behavior of the grey heron, it can see the fish, more especially fish if they breathe brief out. Most of the time, the fish likes to come out and pop them, I mean, their nostrils out of the water. That is very common. It's where the fish get, uh, where it, it's more vulnerable from uh, a gray heron itself. You can see there, it look like a log. I'm not sure what might be. Unfortunately, I don't have binoculars. It could be terrapin, but the look of the thing is look like a round shape. The log. Oh, unbelievable. Ego just uh, helping the, maybe sharpening the claw cleaning. Uh, not at all the, the colors. You can see now, it's sticking out. The uh, orange light, gray in color, sometimes. So some of it, it depends how old it is. I mean, like now here, towards the bottom, you can see there are a little bit uh, dark colors. They're always in water. So it, it always show that gray color. It might be motivated because they're hunting all the time inside water. The colors might change. If you dip yourself into the water, anything, if you get wet for long or soaked, you'll be able to see your color will change to palish color. But I know that uh, there are like uh, yellow and creation color. Let's take this opportunity while we're still with this uh, gray hair. There's quite a lot of sun that's coming on here. I'll be silent and listening. Let's take uh, this opportunity and head uh, towards Chris in Pride Lane. Hi, 
it seems like we're pulling off some of the most extraordinary sunsets here at Brightland. I'm not going to say anything. Let's just watch it. We got about two minutes for this, then it's gone. Let's just watch it. see a drop eh? it's gonna go quickly it's gonna go quickly that is amazing to touch the horizon probably less than a minute it will touch the horizon hitting something like the mountains in the distance or perhaps a cloud it's gonna go down go down go down look at that from our viewers saying how beautiful this is and look at that you can actually <laughs> not every day we get to see the actual sun setting there's often these clouds on the horizon there yeah, you can see it look at that About a minute left. About a minute, and it's gonna be gone. Probably less than a minute. I think it's got about 20 seconds. Two seconds out. <laughs> Three, four, five, six, seven, eight seconds. Gone. <laughs> Hi there, Chris Rogue. Chris Rogue says, Sun Brightland's hands down won the sunset today. Thank you for that, Chris. Well, I can't take the credit, nor can Prideland's. That's nature. You know, we mere messengers. We just bring you what's out there. How incredible was that? That was just amazing. A big fireball just disappearing. Note how quickly it went, eh? A 
Right, we don't have much time left here at Pridelands before it's dark. Let's see if we can't use this next couple of minutes. Maybe we're lucky with a catch, you never know. But let's go over to Cedric and see what's happening on his side. Yes, I'm just on a Chitwood driveway now. I left uh, that beautiful setting and uh, scenery there at uh, uh, west of Chitwe Airstrip. Uh, it was really very pretty that side. It's just nice to see the sun setting and with that hyena just going into the sun. It was really quite a nice setting that. But I'm going to head on Chitwe uh, driveway now. I'm going back to Gary Main. Uh, I know that uh, this morning they had my reps crossing over here at Chitwe driveway um, into Torchwood. So I'm just going along here, or maybe you never know something has pushed him back this side again. My favorite thing about Wild Earth are the animals and the interaction and the ability to wait and watch and not rush off. You get to watch their behavior and learn about it, the individuals. I would like to see the hyenas at the hyena den, and I have. Look at that. <laughs> if I could be any animal, I would be a cheetah. I would love to run fast. Our Western Cape coastline is graced with a Cape fur seal. This playful species is curious and entertaining. At Hald Bay Seal Rescue Center, seals in need are rescued, fed and nursed back to health by our well-trained team of dedicated staff and volunteers. This wonderful legacy of the center is continued as these protected creatures are rehabilitated and released back into the wild. Right, well, we just had a... Uh, well, still there, the elephants are still going, but they're going further into the bush. It looks like a mom and a young one. Uh, I just see the two. Maybe the rest of the herd kind of uh, might have crossed over already. But uh, yeah, I just also just pointed out on the, on the left hand side of the road after the tour driveway um, some leopard tracks going towards Gary Main. So we're going to definitely it's going, it's going, yeah, let's go take a look. Okay. I think these elephants are slowly moving into the thicker bush, but yeah, let's go take a look here. Yeah. Looks like a female leopard. So I know, as I said, my reps did cross here. I know my reps did cross this side this morning. Uh, maybe it is a female that's just following him or behind him or something, but uh, I'm not too sure. But we'll just take a look here carefully. Uh, yeah, that's how Franklin's calling that side. So yeah, as I said, I think maybe maybe he'll come back this way, Maripsa. Uh Jasmine, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us on our sunset safari. Do females uh, hunt better than male leopards? No, Jasmine. I think they both hunt pretty well. Uh, I'm not saying very uh, successful, but uh, both of them. Um, of course, your male leopard will have a, a better chance on something bigger compared to your female. Um, but still, uh, they, they both hunt pr pretty much equally uh, well when it comes to things like impala, steenbuck, uh, daker, anything like that, Jasmine. But yeah, thank you very much for the question. I didn't look at you. I see, I think that looks like the tracks here. Uh, going straight into Torchwood, yeah, there. Straight into Torchwood. Hey. Um, I'm just going to do this roundabout, yeah. It's a small roundabout, but never know. I just want to see the tracks itself, yeah. Yeah. Looks like going straight along, yeah. Well, it's going actually along this side. Oh, it looks like it's going to inside there. If you are a wild earth explorer, we have exciting news for you. The winner of this month's prize giveaway will win a hamper full of explorer merchandise. Like this fantastic t-shirt that comes in plenty of great colours, a very useful tote bag or even a cap. For those in the southern hemisphere that's heading into winter, a sweatshirt to keep you warm. 
head over to the Wild Earth Explorers page. Sign up to be a Wild Earth Explorer and you could win all of these goodies. Wild Earth, it's in your nature. I'm not gonna come too close because I know you got your babies. And hello you old friend. Isn't she spectacular? Oh look, it's just too special. She's such a fantastic mother. Look at that, isn't that incredible? Yeah, but it is getting nice and cool now. The sun has set, so of course our nocturnal animals will be definitely more active now. So we just have to try and see if we can look around this one, scratch around one up Pan Road, and take a look down here as well. Um, but yes, talk about that as well. Don't forget on the Good evening. Uh, it's a uh, thing called the Vimero nasal gland. It's a gland under the palate. So it'll give them exactly the status of that individual on uh, uh, DNA wise status wise and all that so yes no definitely they'll still figure out if it is his son but they will be territorial but uh, of course the son will most probably venture very far from the father's territory and uh, to create his own territory one day Right, we do apologize for, uh, I think we had a bit of a tech issue there. Um, but yes, coming back to Jasmine's uh, question, uh, do male or do father leopards actually uh, recognize their son in adulthood? Yes, uh, Jasmine, that is uh, very true. They do, they've got a, a gland called the femoral nasal gland. And uh, yes, that is, uh, that gland will kind of give them exactly the DNA and the status of that individual so, but the thing is, uh, once that male leopard, unfortunately, when they become adults, uh, they all venture very far from the father's territory. So the chances of them ever bumping into each other is not really, is not that good at all. Um, but yeah, they will know exactly that individual. So yes. But also just remember on uh, a fireside chat for all the explorers on uh, Saturday evening on the 14th of May, after our sunset drive, uh, we are going to have a fireside chat with uh, Graham Wellington and to discuss all the new doings of Wild Earth. All right, let's continue. Um, let's continue. And let's see, uh, looks like leopard tracks coming back into this area. Not too sure, but no, this is the uh, territory, uh, the area. Mulling coming to the one room to have a bit of a, a signal, yeah. I'm gonna go up. All right, we are in the Mulawanini. We're just gonna just uh, listen out here and we're just gonna sit here a little bit and enjoy this drainage line. All Wild Earth explorers have a chance to join our naturalists in a monthly fireside chat. This is a great way to learn more about our guides, animal characters and wildlife locations. 
We would love to hear from you as to the topics that interest you the most. Email us your ideas or tweet using the hashtag WildEarth and we will be sure to take them into account when planning our evenings around the fire in the future. Wild Earth Explorers, it's a new nature. Watch out for southern ground hornbills. If you see one, then a curse could befall you. Seeing a hyena could bring out the witches and spotting a snake track could give you a rash. On Friday the 13th of May, Wild Earth will be setting off on a special unlucky safari where we search for things that bring bad luck. Are these just mythical superstitions or could they be true? Join us to find out. So we're on the northern side of Chitwa Clearing now, or Chitwa Open, uh, north of the dam, of Chitwa Dam. Um, this is now a nice road. I love the name of this road. It's called Shirombi Rombi, meaning um, uh, a strangler fig. So a strangler is a nice strangler fig around here, and that's known as uh, a Shirombi Rombi in Shangan. But yeah, while well, we continue up there, heading back uh, west slowly towards uh, Juma, well, let's head over to Rexon and uh, see what's happening on his drive. Yes, uh, okay, we are just, uh, uh, we apologize, I think we're also having a little bit of technical difficulties on the other vehicle, but uh, yes, we are now coming towards uh, Chitwa Old Driveway, and then Gary Main, I'm going to head back to Juma, maybe we're going to take a look, see if the lumber didn't come further now out, or where she, wherever she's been, I'm really hoping that uh, we can <laughs> find... Yeah, no, she's uh, she's definitely been a sneaky uh, sneaky girl um, over the last few days. Uh, really giving us uh, uh, the run around. But uh, I'm sure we'll get her. You know, actually, even uh, even uh, um, Temba as well. I mean, Temba I haven't seen for a long time. Temba, we last time I saw Temba was maybe beginning of April, beginning of April, still in the Molawati. Uh, that was the last time I saw Temba when he went south into Little Gauri. So I don't know how far he went or if he did turn north again, I'm not too sure, but uh, definitely no news on uh, Temba. So yeah, there's a few of the characters around that we need to kind of look out for, I'm sure, and we just want to try and find out uh, a bigger picture on what's happening and where's, uh, who's where, and uh, that would be an ideal thing for us now. Alright, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to slowly head down towards uh, Twin Dams. Hat, what do you think? Um, yeah, let's do the uh, original Twin Dams. Uh, head to that side. And take a look. Oh, let's see if anyone's coming on the road. 
I'm think, uh, I think Rexon is up here north, north of, what's that? Is it Impala? Uh, it's Impala, sorry. Look at that, look at that, there's a tiny, tiny leopard cub. Karula has given birth overnight. Look at the little guy who just came around the corner. That is incredible, that's probably his first solo kill. Oh, that is wonderful. Oh, and have a look, here comes Osana with the monitor lizard. So Osana, of course, at the same time decided to go climbing up the tree. He's just nearly fallen out of it again. If look at that, he's running away. The buffalo is chasing Osana at the moment. rate has gone up slightly. In fact, it's gone up quite a lot. This elephant is now two meters from us. Okay, we might have to move here. No? Yes. Sorry, my friend, but you're about to push that onto the car. You see how cross he was that we didn't want to watch him push the tree over. That's why we moved. <laughs> We are now in the area, I think uh, this is my last belief. Uh, it might be Kalamba. She, she drives me, really, it makes me worried. I drive all this road and I can't find any tracks. She, she might be not far again. Due to the, the habitant itself, which uh, the area where she went, I believe she might have left the cups. If uh, is anyone around the campsite, I believe she might be. She loves hunting very close to the lodge. But I see in the morning that will make us come back in the same area. Maybe she have crossed into the site of Chita Chita, the impala that uh, Cedric uh, had lambing earlier on. Could it be the leopard. You never know which one. And also with Kalamba, if the cubs grow bigger, she will manage to go areas hyena. Oh, look at this boy here. Yeah. Uh, don't go off road. Hyena is a very good sign sometimes to indicate that uh, if it's any kill or lion or leopards in that particular area, look at how she move. Very excited, a uh, sub out of hyena. Let's, let's try. This is the area, of course, where we think uh, Galamba might be. With all the cups, I believe, it could be not the right time for us to find here, but uh, let's see where this uh, Aina taking us to. Going down a drainage line, the other side of this uh, drainage line. Let's see if we're lucky to find this hyena here.
Look like uh, we have to go all the way down to the other side. It is no go area. The habitat stop us is very thick. But let me switch off again. That might be useful. Listening all the time. If it's a leopard in the area, if a hyena come, well, especially if a mother have cubs or kill, will be grunting. I've seen, I haven't copied you that um, the hyena went down. I haven't able to identify, but uh, look like dipping into this drainage line. Is the area where? A little bit east, the tracks of Tan Kalamba. Tingana has been affectionately known as the Duke of Juma for many years, but his path to the throne was not an easy one. Mvula was a legend from the south. This is the cat that I'm pretty sure Tingana was sniffing around for. That is Mvula. How exciting is this? Eventually, Mvula lost, but his young son, Quarantine, started to push through from the east. At the beginning of 2018, an intruder arrived. His name was Hukumuri. Let's find, there's an old crossing here. Let's find, why don't you cross to the other side? We're trying to see if we can relocate the hyena again. Look like uh, it's really moving away so fast from us. Cannot cross here. Yeah. Let me try to go a little bit further more to the east and look for point of crossing and go to the other side. But it's promising, it looked like. Let's head uh, over to Cedric, who have found something in a tree. I was so hoping to find an owl tonight. I was really, really hoping to find one. And here we've got the Varose eagle owl, uh, one of our larger, uh, largest owl species here in South Africa. It is such a beautiful uh, specimen of an owl. You can see those beautiful ears, those feather-like ears that's really sitting right on top. And they've got those beautiful black lines just running down the side of their head. And of course, uh, putting out the shape of their face, and which is almost like a, a satellite dish and picking up on any and noises that's coming through from the grasses. But as well, they've got those lovely little pink eyelids as well. You'll find when they do blink, you can actually see a little bit of that pink pinkness there. But yeah, usually you'll find if it's a nice sun that's hitting them, you'll find that uh, those eyelids are really, looks like it's wearing like makeup, pink makeup on the eyelids. 
I was sitting nicely here on the dead uh, branch and I was well spotted by our cat. And uh, as we drove past, he got to see this little owl. Well, not little owl, a big owl sitting on this dread dead branch. Of course, you know, you'll find that they are very much nocturnal hunters. Mali, good uh, evening. Um, how does owls uh, detect, most probably, uh, smaller animals like insects? Well, not really insects. You'll find that this owl, like the Veroz eagle owl, um, they will pretty much listen out for any rustle in the grass, especially from rodents. So like the gerbils, uh, rats, mice, any of that kind of uh, food source, uh, they will try and listen out for. This morning we were driving and suddenly we heard a lot of commotion. I think the wild dogs might have caught an impala then, or the leopard might have caught the impala, and as it was dragging it, the wild dog saw it, started chasing the leopard up into the tree, and then the hyenas came to steal it. But, uh, what an incredible sighting. With the traditional stories I've learned that uh, it does have future and a past. If you follow it, it will never ever go wrong in life. It's very important because it contains, of course, the history background and the knowledge of the bush. In each and every family, they have so-called a tree or a marula tree. We'll go there and kneel down and talk to the tree and say, Do we want success in the family. See, sitting really nicely perched right on top of that uh, dead branch. Ali, good evening. Thank you for joining us. It is. They've got the most pretty little face, and uh, I just I love how the owls. I'm sure hopefully I'll Linda Poli. I'm hoping that you are watching. I know that you love your owls. But yes, they are very, very pretty. And uh, those are the larger, largest of the owl species that we do have here. Of course, we've got a lot of little owlets. And the owlets, of course, are much, much smaller compared to uh, your owls, like a barn owls, spotted eagle owl, and of course, this Verose eagle owl as well. Very, very pretty. <laughs> Can you hear the elephants? This is just complaining a little bit further oh, east of us. And uh, I wonder why it's under that little stress that side. But you can see this owl definitely hasn't, doesn't bother about that call at all. He's just sitting up there. Very large talons as well. Very, very large talons. I mean, of course, swooping down and then pinning their prey. Um, of course, anything like the rodents and that, and putting them down. And we're pruning itself now. Of course, getting ready for the night, nighttime hunt. And they've got very soft feathers, owls. owls. Owls' feathers are very, very soft. That's why you find when they do fly, you don't hear them at all. Oh, maybe it wants to fly. Oh, good old stretch. Well, looking at the owls, you must remember tomorrow is our lucky and unlucky um, date. It's uh, Friday the 13th. Uh, of course, uh, anything uh, strange that you get uh, luck from or unlucky from, we will be discussing that tomorrow. Of course, on our sunrise and our sunset drives.
James, good evening. Uh, what kind of predators will hunt this kind of owls? Well, James, uh, it is a big owl. Um, they are very, uh, quite alert, and they do uh, pretty much sit right on top of the trees and that. So, um, I think, of course, you'll find something maybe, if if lucky, um, <coughs> caracal, uh, serval, African wildcat, something like that. You know, one of the uh, the feline species. So yes, that's uh, always possible. Uh, but then again, the owls are sitting really far and very high up and in very thick canopies as well. So it's very difficult for those species to really get there and hunt them. But anyway, let's, that, uh, that's gone off. Let's continue with our drive. Ribbon is the matriarch and has recently been seen with injuries to her body. Corky was the previous matriarch and is believed to be taken back her status. Intima was born to Ribbon in February 2017 and also enjoys a high ranking. Hart is the next rank down. and in June is believed to be the lowest rank, easily recognizable by a floppy left ear. Three brothers named the Avoca males arrived in Juma in 2018. This area had recently been vacated by the Birmingham boys. In 2019, they were seen mating with females from both prides and went on to sire cubs with them. The most recognizable lion in this coalition is Dark Mane. Aside from the Dark Mane that gave him his name, he can be recognized by a distinctive limp. So, uh, okay, so that Veroz eagle out did fly off. I think it went off to do its hunt. And I think we are so heading off further north on Twin Dams Road. I think what we're going to try and do, I want to go on slowly head towards Chilapan, Ingwe Alley. Just take a look around that area because I know that this morning, we, uh, while we were sitting at Gauri Dam, we had one uh, vocalization of a lion, but it was just once off and it was very close. And I think maybe in that block or something, but I'm not too sure. I didn't have much tracks, and uh, but it's just for one. And so that's why we're just going to head to that place and um, just scratch around there. Maybe we are lucky. Right, well, we continue heading up towards Chilapan and that side. Let's go back to your Rexon, and uh, I think he's doing the same. I think he's just a. Uh, Busy with his evening and drive. Welcome from Cedric. We are now heading to our three house dam, Gary Main. And they would love to check Gary Main now. The Kuhumas, they look like they were in our neighborhood looking in a direction of uh, mainly towards the north northwest direction from an uh, area called uh, Watox Task Clearing, which is not far. If they have not gone up and moved, it will be uh, the best for us, I mean, to see them, or it will be the best time for us to get them before they cross into our property around Gary Main. And it's quite a lot of uh, sighting on the southwest of the property into our neighborhood this afternoon. Leopard was there on that corner. Now I just believe that if a lion and the leopard get together, it will always, one has to shift and give one a space. A leopard does like to move in the area where it's quite more uh, activities of uh, a lion. They will normally move to the north. So Gariman will be the best because by now those leopard moving in that area, it's time for hunting. They cannot hunt in the same area where it might be the lions. So I'll use this opportunity. This is, oh, look at this. The elephant here, swimming. Wow. Magic. These two boys.
My favorite sound to listen this time is a male lion uh, roaring and a male leopard sowing. That is the best sound, of course. I love listening to that in most cases. So it really tells you in the area where you are, you in Africa, a lion audio, it's a magic. The third audio that I love the most, it's a hyena, especially late at night, hyena gives a call, unbelievable. It's really magic. We, we are now here at Treehouse Dam. You can see, if I'm not mistaken, it's still a little bit dark, but uh, there's two elephant bulls very close to our vehicles and now trying to swim and playing at the same time. I would like to apologize from Ego. It cannot switch to RR, which is a light that we use to view at night, uh, infrared, which it could be a loose connection there. And I don't really love, I mean, putting light on the elephant. At night, we cannot put an, a light on the elephant's eyes. They really don't uh, love that. In that tree are two carcasses. There's a diker carcass and a water buck. Well, it's not as graceful as <laughs> He's a bit hesitant because, well, climbing a tree is not the easiest, but he will get up there eventually. So let's see, there he goes. And look at the power in that. That is a massive 500 pound cat that has just climbed a marula tree and is up in there. How cool is this? I don't know how he's gonna do it, but let's see. See, the hyenas are far more tolerant of vultures than a lion or leopard would be. Occasionally a hyena will bite sort of a couple of tail feathers out of the back of a vulture, but I've never actually seen them, even once they've caught one, um, actually kill it. Oh, there we go, nearly got him. Uh, really, this is unbelievable. This is a beautiful search and unfortunately with the light doesn't want to switch off. Let me carry on and head towards maybe the Gary Main. The color of the elephant in the water is really, it makes life difficult to see that because it's dark in color and the light is not great. Um, let me carry on towards Gary Main. Maybe we might be lucky here. Just checking tracks of a hyena. Look like leading out of this uh, area heading north. Maybe it could be a lion's audio that. Uh... Ninja, let me say, I had this question earlier on from Eagle a lion's at night. The lions at night, they can see, but it's not the best like in the course of a day. But what I guarantee with the elephant, what they rely on, of course, the sense of smell and hearing, it's unbelievable. And they can use that uh, sense of smell. Confirm, yes, of course. Um, elephant doesn't have good eyesight. If I, I get you to correctly, it might be they use sense of a smell at night and the feeling of the area. In most cases, they don't have. They rely on the hearing and also smelling. It's 
see if I can see something. Look like uh, something recently walked here. Hyenas, a big hyena. There's one hyena here in the plant of Juma. It does have a, a really uh, leg structure that look like a, a lion, which is really confusing in most cases. You can get excited that the lion have walked in your way, heading your direction, while it's a hyena. Big female, I believe. And all species that uh, you know, are uh, hyenas. Let's head to Cedric, which is uh, in an evil bumble. Maybe he might uh, bump to something like a leopard, who knows? Yes, I'm coming up to Gary Dam. So there's that little, little scrubby running across there. Let me take a look this side. I'm thinking, um, I don't know, Tavangumi. I haven't seen Tavangumi as well. We were talking about leopards earlier, thinking about who we haven't seen, which characters for a while. Um, I haven't seen Tavangumi for a while. I think the last time was with uh, Kelly when she was still here. I think that was the uh, beginning of April, mid April, beginning of April. Well, you know, sometime then. And um, yes, definitely I'm uh, really keen to see that beautiful boy again. I'm hoping he comes down more often to uh, this area for us. It'll be fantastic to see him here coming through. Wild Earth Explorers have a chance to join our naturalists in a monthly fireside chat. This is a great way to learn more about our guides, animal characters and wildlife locations. We would love to hear from you as to the topics that interest you the most. Email us your ideas or tweet using the hashtag Wild Earth and we will be sure to take them into account when planning our evenings around the fire in the future. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your nature. Alrighty then, I'm on top of uh, Gary Dam's uh, dam wall and I'm still going to go a little bit north, northwest. I'm going to think I'd like to go um, Galago Pan. I'm going to take a look around that side and see what we can pick up there. But of course there's always uh, very interesting little nocturnal animals that we can try and look for in a little genet. So I love uh, finding a genet somewhere. They are very, very cute. And then of course, uh, maybe even a chameleon but it's, i think it's getting a bit cool now for the chameleons they're starting to really uh, uh take shelter in thicker areas and all that because uh, winter is approaching and they don't enjoy the cold weather but uh, i think i saw an, an african wildcat right in the beginning i think it's like two months ago three months ago <coughs> i saw an african wildcat not far from here but a very quick glimpse of one so that was also quite nice so yes there's always something around here for nocturne you know for the night times and uh, I'm taking them little caracals and servals. Bush babies, I think, uh, who was it? I think it was Tess. She got to see a few bush babies, a nice family of bush babies the other day, which was very nice. Uh, definitely, I miss a, miss a good old bush baby around here. I haven't seen one this side yet. Well, not in this area, but uh, yeah, definitely in the south, southern Kruger Park. There's still lots of uh, uh, bush babies around there, and uh, uh, it's plentiful, but very cute, very cute. 
Oops, come on, uh, Scrubby. There we go. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, well, I agree with Rex, and I think uh, my sounds to listen to at this uh, at this hour of the day is definitely lions uh, calling, roaring. Oh, definitely. I mean, that is uh, iconic for an African bush. But as well, I think uh, for me sometimes uh, hyenas scrapping over a kill and hearing that uh, whining and whooping and and uh, laughing. I think that's our hyena calls are fantastic. I love it, especially when it's all of them together and there's a lot of uh, interaction happening. Uh, it does become quite, quite uh, hair-raising and exciting just to listen to that. But yes, always your predators. I think it's, uh, especially your nocturnal predators, even like the leopard sawing. I mean, rrr, 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 rrr. I love that. Anyway, well, I'll uh, keep soaring away, yeah? Let's uh, head over to Rex and see what's he doing. Welcome back from Cedric on Gary Dam. Lovely area, Cedric to check around the possibilities of uh, leopard around there, maybe Molowati, who knows. We're coming to this uh, Gary main junction of uh, Triple M. The lines were not far from this section here. Yeah. I would like to check here. I can see game drive vehicle just driving past, heading north. Maybe the line is still in the uh, no, I mean, south and south, lying down, who knows, or they have moved. You know, Kuhumas, the females and the cubs look like... Uh, Watch out for southern ground hornbills. If you see one, then a curse could befall you. Seeing a hyena could bring out the witches, and spotting a snake track could give you a rash. On Friday the 13th of May, Wild Earth will be setting off on a special unlucky safari where we search for things that bring bad luck. Are these just mythical superstitions or could they be true? Join us to find out. Look at that, look at that, there's a tiny, tiny leopard cub. Karula has given birth overnight. Look at the little guy who just came around the corner. That is incredible, that's probably his first solo kill. That is wonderful. I oh, have a look, here comes Osana with the monitor lizard. So Osana, of course, at the same time decided to go climbing up the tree. He's just nearly fallen out of it again. And look at that, he's running away. The buffalo is chasing Osana at the moment. The entire pride is still uh, have the avoca melts. And the sub that also followed by avoca melts. So it could be the number of the size of the of pride itself, it giving a little bit of uh, challenging when it comes to hunting and bringing food down. The rest of the uh, pride, I had, I had a report, they cross into the south, further more down west, away from the area, which is really unbelievable. And the Talamatis, also headed west. They were not far from the point, but they extended towards the west, which is also a lot more interesting, how these pride move away from the area. I just put it something here. At night, you never know. Sometimes if you see something, it's great to check. Uh, it's a log. I thought maybe Duck Man is lying down here because he really love lying down flat. Even vehicle comes. You would never even blink an eye or twitching ears. You will flat down. It's one thing, of course, with the lions and leopards in the area. The habituation of the these animals 
they have trust of vehicle and human beings sometimes more than uh, unnecessary. So it really is good to see lions relax and leopard relax, but sometimes it's not a great thing because they might move into different areas where they're not used to. A lion getting more relaxed, lying down like that, getting close to human habitat, also not running away from human and food. They might really read them in a different language uh, of that particular animal, maybe lose its life. Never know. But uh, thanks because. Mega asking if we can see anything at the night drive. Yes, we, we can see a lot. This is the good time to see all the nocturnal species. And the uh, night drive is especially is for all the nocturnal species, not impala and elephants. Oh, thank you. Maredo speaks another language. Do I fear? Not at all, not at all. The only thing that might fear is a snake. It's in my culture. I don't go along with the snake. Uh, I won't fear a lion, I won't fear an elephant. I won't fear a rhino, because I can read their body language before. What I fear is a snake. I really fear a snake a lot, because that is something that I was taught while I was a young boy. Don't come close to it. But, of course, it depends what the snake is doing, but at night, also if I don't see, the only animal that I fear the most is the snake. Uh, lions, leopards, I can handle that. An elephant and a buffalo is not a problem at all. There's a vehicle in front of us, looks like uh, it's heading home. Nice driving here, nice stop. It is an area where we're thinking maybe the rumors will come back into our area. But we'll see you in the morning. Look like they are now operating not far from Twin Dam up to Three House in Hoffman's. They might uh, by tomorrow morning back into our area by Zoe's Road Freeman's cut line in that surrounding. We need to see Lions Cup, it's been a long time. And also settle in with those kuhuma, I mean with this uh, avoca mill in the area. My favorite thing about Wild Earth are the animals and the interaction and the ability to wait and watch and not rush off. You get to watch their behavior and learn about it, the individuals. I would like to see the hyenas at the hyena den, and I have. Look at that. <laughs> if I could be any animal, I would be a cheetah. I would love to run fast. Our Western Cape coastline is graced with a Cape fur seal. This playful species is curious and entertaining. At Hald Bay Seal Rescue Center, seals in need are rescued, fed and nursed back to health by our well-trained team of dedicated staff and volunteers. This wonderful legacy of the center is continued as these protected creatures are rehabilitated and released back into the wild. That is nice. Uh, again, look like uh we're back in an area here where we might uh, search for a new leopard or lions. New lions, new leopard, who knows? Earlier on, I've seen tracks look like uh, a buffalo cross Sangari Main to the south. Let's head to Saturday and see what he's up to.
Yes, uh, so just trying to look out for any night critters around here at the moment on Galigo shortcut. Um, but yes, uh, I was listening to Sir Rex and saying, of course, uh, he's um, pretty much uh, at night time. What will he be afraid of at night time? Well, I think. <sighs> I think what I'm really afraid of at night time is uh, definitely one of the, those bark spiders. Now a bark spider is uh, a spider that's right across from one tree to the other tree and it sits in the middle of the road and it's like huge. And uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I don't want to go through one of those things. I had to duck and dive once or twice from a bark spider. But yes, Sinak, good evening. Thank you very much for the comment. Uh, it, uh, definitely, I think uh, a bush baby would be fantabulous. I would love to see a bush baby now. Thank you. I think I should order one. Now that this, they are very sweet, very cute. And uh, I'm really looking out for one. And it's, and it's really, for them, it's actually easy to see them around because um, of to find them is to, uh, you know, you've got the light shining into the eyes. They've got these real orange, orange eyes. And of course, two little eyes close together. And if you put a spotlight and like, you know, pass the eyes, it really reflects quite a bit. Ooh. I'm just taking a look here. I've got wild dog tracks coming all the way up here. Yeah. Not many. It looks like maybe for those four. And then heading up on Galigo shortcut. Interesting. I wonder that. We'll definitely go take a look here for those uh, wild dogs tomorrow. I'm definitely going to head up that side. That's nice to see. That's on top of the vehicle tracks as well. So I think that might be from this afternoon. Yeah, interesting. Looks very fresh. But yes, definitely a fear of spiders at night time. And those, of course, during the daytime. But uh, I can imagine that night time with those bark spiders. They, and of course, they consume their web early in the morning. And then later uh, or in the evening, they'll spin their web across the road again. And uh, they'll create a nice big uh, web. And uh, yes, uh, they're not, uh, not pretty spiders but they're not they're very harm they're harmless but uh, they're not too inviting all right I'm just gonna go on the western side yeah I just want to take a look if we can pick up on on uh, any of the tracks here western side of quarantine I haven't been on this side for a bit but definitely I agree with the uh, as well. Look, snakes at night time. If you get surprised by a snake at night time, it won't be very nice. So I don't think it'll be, it won't, it won't be a nice surprise at, at all. I think I'll jump out of the vehicle but just to land on my lap. If you are a wild earth explorer, we have exciting news for you. The winner of this month's prize giveaway will win a hamper full of explorer merchandise. Like this fantastic t shirt that comes in plenty of great colors a very useful tote bag, or even a cap. For those in the Southern Hemisphere that's heading into winter, a sweatshirt to keep you warm. Head over to the Wild Earth Explorers page. Sign up to be a Wild Earth Explorer and you could win all of these goodies. Wild Earth, it's in your nature. Hukamori. Oh, he is an impressive looking male leopard. Look at that neck on him. He just looks ready for a fight. This is only the third time that we are seeing him that is known as the Hukumuri male. And he certainly has a lot of character and atmosphere. This is gorgeous. Hukumuri having a drink at one of the little seasonal pans. Isn't he absolutely gorgeous? Compact, powerful, focused. I love it. Coming to the southern side of the quarantine area, but yeah, it's, uh, the road has been a little bit bumpy today. Eh? I, can, yeah, I'm, I can feel my my back needs to be readjusted uh, very soon. I have to get a chiropractor or a, a physio in. <laughs> it would it would help. I've got some eyes. I oh, know it's Impala. Mm, like a bit of a herd of Impala that side. I 
Milo, good evening. Uh, thank you for joining us on our sunset safari. Uh, most difficult uh, nocturnal animal to find. Well, Milo, there's uh, several, um, but I would I would really think yeah in this area uh, would be something like an art fork or even a pangolin. That I think a pangolin is uh, due definitely. I think. Uh, we need to find a pangolin very soon. I'm hoping for that. But see, the pangolin is, uh, with this uh, thick vegetation, it is a little bit uh, tougher, a little bit difficult. I think it uh, needs to, uh, the grass needs to flatten a little bit. And uh, because if they do walk through this grass now, you will not see it at all, unless it's on the road um, or on a termite mound digging up uh, some termites. But other than that, yeah, no, look, I don't think, uh, uh, I don't think we'll see too many of that right now, but it will be fantastic. But an art fork, definitely. I think, uh, as I said, I've, only, I've seen two. One was uh, being devoured by Tingana many years ago there on uh, Arethusa. Uh, it was uh, a art fork in the tree with all Tingana busy eating on it. And the uh, second one was uh, last year. Uh, what a very brief visual, but it was also on a termite mound, which was fantastic coming back from drive. And my tracker, Mark, he, uh, of course, uh, spotted that uh, art fork on the mound and uh, got to see it, but very quickly. So, but uh, one of my guests did take a photo, <laughs> but the photo didn't, <laughs> didn't do justice at all because that photo, I think it looked like a blur, it looked just like a stump, but it was, a, it was an art fork that they definitely captured. And uh, yeah, so. Yes, that will be on. But then there's also some of the feline uh, cats, so you'll find uh, like a caracal, the lynx, that'll be fantastic. I'd love to see uh, of the same thing, I've seen two in my 16 years here, yeah, I've seen two of them, and both of them were brief visual. Funny enough, one wasn't too far from where we are now, it was on Triple M South, close to Gary Main Junction. Uh, that one I saw, I think it was in 2013, 2014. And, um, yeah, that was a, a quick one. And the other one was on uh, Cheetah Plains, close to Mala Mala Boundary. They on Cheetah Plains open. Um, but the same thing, it was a very quick uh, view of that caracal and it just uh, disappeared. Yeah. I think the more the common, uh, smaller of the cats, of course, uh, the serval. Uh, not common, but I'm saying I've seen more servals than than caracals and African wildcats. Oh, we'll continue. Yeah. Oh, oh, there's a Janet. Ah, it's just gone. Sorry. Uh, well, let's head to Rexon and see what he's what he's up to on his bumble. Well, I'm trying to see if I can find this Janet. Welcome back from Cedric, which is more to the west of quarantine. We're coming from the western part of the conservancy, checking here. What I'll see, what I see here, there's no much, only the tracks of uh, fresh impala. I don't know where it's headed, it might be somewhere in the bush. I was looking. Wild Earth Explorers have a chance to join our naturalists in a monthly fireside chat. This is a great way to learn more about our guides, animal characters and wildlife locations. We would love to hear from you as to the topics that interest you the most. Email us your ideas or tweet using the hashtag Wild Earth and we will be sure to take them into account when planning our evenings around the fire in the future. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your nature.
with the spotted jennet, the hunt, all these small species of birds that roost up in a tree. It's for them, if they snake, they are so silent. They are similar if you look at how actually they hunt. They can stalk uh, any bad species that might be lying in a tree freezing because they cannot see well. They get surprised, most especially Franklins and the other species. Janet likes to hunt them at night. I remember when I was a young boy, I used to set up the same uh, silent gun for Franklins and uh, guinea fowls late in the afternoon. But if you come back early in the morning, Let's take uh, this opportunity linking back to, I mean, heading back to Cedric uh, around the uh, western side of quarantine. Maybe you might be lucky. Yes, welcome. Oh, a little scrubber is running towards us. There's something that ran that side. I just want to see what happened there. Sorry, I just saw something running. Sorry, Scrubby. Sorry, buddy. Um, let me go past you here. Thank you. I want to see what... Oh. Of course, we've got a hyena that's just all of a sudden come to you, Juma Bushbri. Hello. Good evening. What is this? Looks like... Looks like here. Yeah? Hello. Coming right past us. Coming to greet us here. Yeah. It's a nice ending for a nice little hyena, eh? Lisa, good evening. Thank you very much for that comment. Yes, it's, it's been always, always a fantastic drive. There's uh, it's always new things, new excitement. It's never a dull moment. I do want to quickly turn around. Sorry, I just saw that little scrubby running. And I think it got a fright because of that uh, hyena. But a uh, oh, good old ending to the drive. I think, uh, I don't know where that, uh, uh, no, no. Did anybody ID that hyena for me? It'll be fantastic, but uh, I might be, look like Swazi, but I might be wrong. Uh, has uh, disappeared, I think, on a mission. So let it be. Uh, I'm going to stop here. Oh, a, lot of, a lot of eyes looking back this way. I just want to say thank you to everybody for joining us on our sunset drive this uh, evening. Um, hopefully everybody had a fantastic time, it was nice uh, sunsets, uh, nice buffalo, pride lands, elephants and uh, yes, a nice uh, surprise with our hyena at the end here, so that is fantastic. And uh, hopefully we see you on the sunrise safari tomorrow morning. And don't forget on the 14th of May, after our sunset uh, drive, we will have a fireside chat with uh, Graham with all the explorers and to ex explain exactly everything about Wild Earth. But from all the Wild Earth uh, crew and uh, everybody at uh, FC and of course everybody on the drives and at Pridelands, we all say thank you very much for joining us today and we will see you tomorrow morning on our sunrise drive. Viewer discretion is advised.